minute, which lets me attack do every for a whole minute I get to do every attack roll rolling twice and use the better result. And my damn my, my attacks deal one d six extra damage. So just like I just kind of uh, what is it Kaioken? Is that what the Nerf. <laughs> I watch too much super lately. Ugh. Uh, we're live. Okay, there you go. Right, we're level four, level five. Five. It should five. be five. I wonder if I did that and I just didn't. Oh god. Change my number. Not this again. Not this. I think you get what you get. Yeah. I can't imagine a situation where we'd level up without including you in that those activities. No, no, that's times. right. I think I did. I'm just. You, I'm sure you did. I just have four written down as my level. That's all. I think. I, I you just need to erase that. Up. Put five. Yep. Yeah. 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 I got new spells. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I would have done it at home, but I had I left everything here. You left all to be desired. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Thomas, do you see on the table the crude map that we made of the temple? Yep. All right, good. I'm glad that's still floating around out there. Um, you guys have done some exploration. I know Artemis had pulled one of the the sensors. I tried to cheat the system. Yeah, and you... I was rebuked. I don't know if you took damage, but I think mm -hmm. you, you did take some damage. And you used up a spell or two. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ardith Bay went to the bottom of the amphitheater pool, found like the statue down there. Um, Mert, had you been around for the temple exploration? No. Okay. My guys and I kind of just sat down. Yeah, yeah. You, you were just yeah, but you you re you recalled this from the the recap mm. that they had entered the temple. Yes. Yes. All right. So I'll just give I'll give a quick. So I think I think both Merrick and Artemis are on that right wing area. Mm -hmm. Um, Were you looking for the red one? Pencil. Yeah. Artemis was able to bring one, uh, one of the brazers from that pile to uh, to like the wall, um, but determined it wasn't perhaps the crucial one, or if he needs all of them or something, because he, he didn't get a huge magic reaction from that one. Um, so yeah, in general. The main temple has mostly faded mosaics um, on the walls, with the exception of the main chamber, which shows mostly intact art of acolytes um, going through that descent into the water and coming out rejuvenated or resurrected on the other side. And the smaller, or the side walls of the chamber showed arts of temple acolytes splashing water with large bases onto the walls of the temple, it looks like. Um, Thomas, or Merrick, investigated the, uh, that'd be the western wing, found a, uh, a dormitory, so lots of stone beds where everything else had pretty much rot rotted away. Um, and, yeah, more rip faded mosaics in this room to the point that he couldn't really make out what creatures were depicted or what the inscription of text was. Uh, but then you guys did eventually... Uh, Merrick cleared the way to the eastern wing, um, which uh, looked like maybe a, a smaller chamber or a bedroom for someone of significance, perhaps a high priest or priestess, um, where there is a single stone bed in here, uh, ruined a bookshelf on the southern uh, wall of the room, and a lordly statue, um, which had a hollow space on the uh, crown of his head, um, which had these little, uh, basically little shafts that led right behind his eyeballs, which are of a clear material. Um, and then Artemis was up against this wall where the statue was and was able to look into the room and did his experimentation. So that 
that is where we left off. So there, there was no reaction to... You me. poured something in there, didn't you? Yeah, or I poured <laughs> water in the eyeballs, and then I put a drop of blood. Oh, yeah, so that was just what... You just took some water from your water skin mm -hmm. and then added drops of blood. Yes, okay. Oh, yeah, I think that was where we just... I think we stopped it there, actually. Okay, thank you. Um, you you see your your mixture kind of fill up in the uh, the little chamber, and it seeps out through the eyes. It, it's it weeps it out basically as if it were porous. Mm -hmm. So um, you did you did fill it up, but nothing indeed seemed to have to have happened from that. You still have your tattered, tattered piece of paper? Not at the moment. No. There's a small, like... The, the, the contents of that message yes, are contingent on that piece of paper. Here it is. Okay, you feed you. And See through Farwell's eyes. It's just Farwell, that's what we don't know. Cast. Speak to statue. <laughs> what is your name? Do you have that? If I read minds, maybe if it had a mind. See, so gaze through submerged lids, a teardrop of blood opens the door to the pure eye. <laughs> and they seem to open and shut a teardrop of blood. Well, maybe you gotta fill them with blood. You think all blood? Well, I mean, where'd you get water from? My water skin. No, I mean, what? Oh, because of submerged? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe it just needs to be all blood, no water? Anything's worth you're, a you're try. You're on a wall right now, aren't you? No, I popped out. Oh, yeah. I can make blood for you, though. Oh, good. Let's try it. Okay. And what's important about gazing through them? That's what I have to think. I mean, I can create, like, a whole <laughs> keg of blood. Does it come if with we a container? Experiment does, it come, does it come with a container? No. Do you have a container? I have this water skin now. Okay. Unless... Your mouth. There's probably got to be a vase around here, right? You saw several large vases in the dormitory room. Okay, let's get one of those. All right. Okay, it's, it's heavy, but you've got spare labor around, and you're pretty strong, Mary. Yeah, you can carry, what, like 500 pounds? 500 pounds with a check. Okay. 350 and pounds at will. Okay, yep. So you, you, you bring over one of the, the large vases. I will fill it with blood. Human. Blood. Okay. Now I might need to use a check to carry to pick this up. Well, why do you need to pick it up? To dump it into Farwell's eyes. You want like a scoop or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A ladle? Yeah. I can make you a ladle. Of blood. <laughs> <laughs> Solid blood. Solid. Ladle, a ladle blood into Farwell's eyes. Okay. If that is his name. The statue's mm -hmm. eyes. <laughs> All right. Um, I, while I'm doing it, I'm going to tell you, like, can you like look through there and see if you see anything? Okay. I'll look. And how do you do that again? What ability is it? Uh, I thought you meant you wanted me to just Yeah, just look, look. at it. Yeah. Oh, like look. staring at through the, the eyes. Like, okay. Through the submerged lids. All right. Um, you observe, I mean, Merrick's not able to observe directly because he's pouring it in, mm -hmm. but if he were, you're able to observe just what Merrick did. The fluid just seeps and weeps out of the, uh, the clear kind of vessels of the eyes, even though it doesn't look like it should. It looks like it's actually sealed, so. Hmm. It does, and then your conjured blood splashes onto the ground in front of the statue. Oh, man. Why don't I just, like, forceful push this statue? Yeah. Send it flying. 
Okay, I'm gonna forceful push. Okay. Where's my D3? Uh, Why are you stealing it? Uh, what does a D3 look like? Like this? Looks like a D6. Yeah, this. No, oh, no that it's, is it. It's yeah. white. All right, I push it five yards. Okay. Um, there's no limitations to size. Not a one. Okay. Um, Can you push it over? No, it has to be an object, and we sort of ruled on this. So I yeah, I couldn't push the well, wall. I'm gonna. Fortunately, oh, there's a statue here. I'll honor it. And the statue's not attached to the wall. It's an object. I was just curious. For some reason, I somehow I pictured the statue. It was embedded in the wall. That's what I thought. It was like in between us. But and the that does not make it part of the building. Sure. You, uh, you're able to, uh, to create the surge of force that just blasts the statue. Um, and the two of you, um, take some damage from the ceiling collapsing. Nice. Because there are already signs of structural instability <coughs> in here, so this shouldn't have come as too big of a surprise. All right, that's the wrong one. Okay, I, I didn't roll too too high. If I did, it could have been deadly. So, uh, eleven damage to both of you. I will cast negate harm. Okay. Damn you. Merrick negates the harm with his hard head. Yeah. <laughs> no, he accepts the harm. Embrace Leaves it. little harm to be desired. Yeah. It's like, no. it's like I could be in a puddle. Are you dead? No. Oh, okay. Um, but actually, the puddle's not a half bad idea. You know, I could see through the wall. Doesn't matter. I walked through the, the wall. wall. The wall's, the wall's been no. collapsed. There you go. The whole thing is no gone. No problem. Can we just get through? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, there's some stepping over rocks and such, but but yes, you could you could just walk through. Oh, let's do that. There you go. Okay, you are in um, a dark chamber. You guys all heard like in the distance, like a collapsing going on. Oh, there's like a big cloud of dust coming from the one of the wings of the temple. And we knew kind of they'd gone that way. Yeah, my men and I will. Rushed over there, I would say. All right. In case, like, right, they're trapped under debris or something like that. Okay. Um. So you're in this. Uh, you're in this dark chamber. Um. You hear rushing footsteps behind you. Murder. Ah! <laughs> Horse lightning. Oh. Um. Fireball. And. Uh, yeah, it's actually quite sizable. It's about the same size as the room you just came from, but clearly it was concealed. There's no windows to the outside world in here, so it's it's dark save for the light that's admitting into the room from the breach you've just created. The uh, the statue is just kind of half in shambles on the floor next to you, and really in this room there's just that big pile of uh, of ornate incense burners that uh, you saw through the uh, through the vision. Mert, bring forward your least capable man. Uh, <laughs> geez. I don't think uh, any of my men are l the least capable. That's impossible. We will have we we all have an Olympic game to determine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break from this uh, temple. Yeah, to quickly... Whoever ranks lowest. They Volk would. could organize a lottery system for yeah. them. Yeah. Casting lots. Basically, I, yeah. it would just ex I mean, expedite it so that one would be chosen. I don't know. Well, to mess with these sensors. It can't be uh, Kane or Seamus. Those, those were, were your two that got the killing blow. <laughs> yeah. On the it is okay. neither of those two. Maybe who is like the most cowardly in well in battle? I'm gonna cast sense magic, so I want to know. Okay. Every magical source in this room. There's 
you get you're getting like a, basically a headache from just the pile. Like there's intense magic in there, but yes, there. The the you can tell from the reading that it's possible there could be some sort of trap, curse, or enchantment associated with them. So, <clears throat> all right, then I'll use mind over matter. Okay, and I'll start using telekinesis to sort of separate them. All right, maybe you know place them a little bit around the room. Sure, there's plenty of space in the room. Yeah, so. You watch Artemis kind of manipulating things, huh. and he's got them all separated out. There are in total twenty nine braziers in that or twenty nine sensors in that pile. Okay. Four of them are particularly ornate looking. The rest are all fairly similar. Do I get an equal reading from each of them? It's mm, that would be that would be quite. An application of what's it called? Detect magic. Sense magic. Sense magic. You can't make any distinguishing read off of them. Okay. What could go wrong? Well, then go play. No. <laughs> no. No. The question was rhetorical. Yes. I suppose I could handle the most insanity. You can negate damage. Not anymore. Unless I want to sleep here for a moment. <laughs> We'll wake in ten. Yeah. I mean, we have nothing but time, but we do have fifty NPCs. Sure, they can each grab one, and whichever one dies horribly, explode. we know yeah. to throw that one away. But in character, would we be so callous? Probably not. With my well, Artemis, with probably my would mind. take the initiative here. All right, I'll go up to one of the ornate ones. Okay. We'll touch it. Yeah. All right, roll a d4. That's how many times I die. Uh, nice. What color do you want? Red is... Oh yeah, there's your Red science. is dead. Thank yep. you. One. It turns to ash at your touch, and you take nine damage. Oof. Can you negate that damage? Thank you, Red. All right, you can handle the next one. All right, there's two left. There's three left of the ornate oh ones. <laughs> and there's not ornate ones as well. There's like there's 25 26 of, of those, yeah. Jeez. Or sorry, yeah, 25, correct. I'll so, pick up a non ornate one. Okay. Um, roll a, a neutral d20. Ten. Right in the right middle. Right right okay, no, it was it was a luck. Um, you see them all kind of levitate briefly, and then they clatter to the ground, and you're holding one. Is it the same one I picked up? Yes. Okay. Wait, so all the ordinary ones? They all levitated the briefly. The they were like ones. kind of like trembling, and then they, they dropped down to the and floor. not the ordinary one? Those did not move at all. Okay. I'll mm. inspect my find. Okay. Is it? It's a, it's a bronze incense sensor, so it's it's basically kind of like this box that, like, you open it up, you put whatever you're burning in there, you can light it, and then it's got, like, vents for it to slowly kind of burn and diffuse. So it's, it, it's like a for ceremonial religious purposes. So. Does it have anything in it? No, it's it's quite plain. The, the ones that Artemis is hanging out by are much more richly ornamented and decorated. Okay. There's no, there's no like incense or like uh, any sort of material inside, of, inside of it. So, well, your turn again. I don't think I can survive. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, I'm worth doing. How much HP do you have left? Eight. All right, I'll pick one. How I'll much? Go get All right, roll a D three. One. Okay. Uh oh. All right, Merrick. Um, it turns to ash in your hands, and you take 14 damage. <laughs> oh my god. That's pretty big. That's okay. pretty big. Why didn't you have one of the 50 dudes? Because they'd probably die fused. if they failed. They'll yep. die. But now I will die. So I now it's Merc's turn. Oh, he can heal us, right? Yes, I can. I can. Merch and heal. See what he can do to us. 
You guys I, have rested since the basilisk. That's what I'm asking. So is what the hell does you would have full? You would have your full spell availability. <laughs> you haven't been doing stuff. They've been doing like Artemis has cast quite a number of spells right now. So right. He, for instance, has kind of expended a lot of his power for the day. Okay. Well, then I would have some HP back. Yeah. Yeah, it would be your healing rate back in HP. Mm hmm. From whatever you were at. Previously. Well, I think yeah. I will cast Vitality Burst on the three of us so we each get our healing rate. Okay. In healing back. That's nice. So that gives me another That's little small. chunk. It's not a whole lot. Do you, man. Feel, do you feel hardy enough to. Touch. Uh, I will. In here? I will touch one of the ornate ones. Of the ornate Roll a d6. One. Oh man, the odds are good. <clears throat> Two. Yeah. We have rolled badly on each of these it's rolls. Handy, unless they all turn to ash. Well, actually, there'll be one left after right. this. Oh. Who wants to take that one? Sweet. I think if I use my regular spell recovery, like. Healing to heal one rest, heal damage. Murder, there's a big one. Yeah. Okay. Um, it turns to ash, and you might turn to ash too. Um, that big? Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen. Damage. Yeah. I have five left. Okay. I have twenty. All right. There's just one left now. Though. All right. Now go get the last one. Do you want to? Act no fate. way that'll hurt. You. I'll spell, I'll spell recovery <laughs> to heal my healing rate. Uh, so I'm at fifteen HP. You just. Cordan, I put my life in your hands. Yeah, yeah. What are the dying rules in this? The game? dying <laughs> rules. Yeah. Zero HP. Well, we'll get to that if, if someone dies. No consequences in advance. All right, Thomas. Name that. Movie. I'm gonna do shared. <laughs> I'm gonna do no shared recovery. In advance. So heal rate plus ally in short gets two as well. So we heal our healing rate again. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Now I'm feeling pretty solid. How is your HP? Twenty. Yeah, I think you're the safest. I can still heal you more if I if you need me to. Well, we'll see if I'm an ash. Yes, that is true. All right, I'll try picking up the last. All right, Candelibra. You pick it up. No roll. Uh, all of the, um, all of the non ornate ones. So the other twenty five, they just kind of uh, evaporate, and you take you didn't take any damage, and you are holding this and. It feels very precious to you. This is it. All the right. center of Anatar. Yep. Make it happen. <laughs> you start shaking it? Yeah. Okay. Um, what's your intelligence uh, attribute? Nine. Okay. He's just shaking it around. Nothing. Nothing's happening. Do we need to, like, Give me that! Need to stop some stop doing that! I hold it firm. Oh. <laughs> You're too stupid. What are you gonna do with it? I don't. My brain will tell me. <laughs> <laughs> do you have, oh, fine. Here, look at it. <laughs> All right. I'm shaking it. All right. <laughs> my brain. Does detect magic? Does that persist? How did, does it comment at all on its duration or it lasts for a minute? Okay. Do you have? Would you be able to cast it again? Yeah, I can cast. All it right. Again. Well, now that this is the only one in the room, you can yeah. concentrate it much. Okay. Okay. It all becomes clear to you. It all becomes very clear. There you go. Oh, a document. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> you don't like to see that. With a greater will than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Monsters have crazy uh, it, uh, attributes. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. We could fuck some shit. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we'll have to have your men use this, though. <laughs> it costs <laughs> too corruption to use. How much corruption is bad corruption? All More than one, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Then I'm at the edge. Cause like every corruption point you get after that, you have to roll, and if you roll under, you get a quirk or something. Right? You get like a mark of darkness. Oh, what? What about a quirk? That's to like shrug off insanity, I think. 
You've become very quirky. <laughs> hmm. Is having to like polish your armor all the time? Is that a quirk or a mark of darkness? That's a quirk. I kind of like this part though. Bringer of <laughs> yes, that's not bad. Spend ten gold, one d four insanity. Yeah, that meant that was insanity, not yeah. bad. Yeah, right. Everyone nearby <clears throat> treats the user as a wise and worthy friend, and will be inclined to suggestion, generosity, and alliance. Mm -hmm. The one with like you summon like the ghosts, right? That's the first that's, one. That's that's two corruption. Yeah, with a three day cooldown. They can fuck some shit up, though. Well, yeah, in a, in a moment of need. Yeah, in a moment of need. Who and how, ba how bad is Mark of Darkness? It could instantly kill you. Mm -hmm. Or it could make you... Like, really repulsive or, and hard yeah. to function even, in society. Even just or, one Mark. Isn't that kind of yeah, what happened like to mark. your guy in the last shadow? Maybe, yeah. The Your dwarf, had, he was quite... Yeah. What was he was the covered in with like the train slaughter? That Boom. was the last, the last one. That was at the start. <laughs> yeah, uh, when he like, started yeah. building the Undercity, he like Did became party, like yeah. twisted. <laughs> and he didn't expect that. Did yeah. our party like get completely replaced, I feel like, at some point? No, no. I think that the big campaign died, ended because Adam died. It was like murder in the streets. But, like, the, 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 the farmer, the, the farmer uh, caravan, right? Didn't we try to take the farmer Someone caravan? Died, yeah. I, yeah. Too. I, don't know. I, I thought you died. I died in the city and then I made Ovum. And, then and we Phil out, died. We went out into the world to conquer And Phil things, died because died he murdered worse. that guy and I just laid there while they came for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like from the movies where you're just yeah. like, oh, I'm like, I'm not waking up for the... Yeah. I was just wondering if anyone from the train actually survived in that campaign. Mm -hmm. I think it was me. Yeah. I survived. Yeah. But... But then I let Phil go to his death, and I mean... And then at the very end, we went up against some tree monster with Ovum. Oh, yeah. And I don't think you were there. I wasn't so there. So the rest of us died. Yeah. And then oh, the yeah, campaign ends. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, the bloom. He the dies bloom. horribly. In combat, at least, <laughs> yeah. though. I think he drowned to death once. That's true. That, he was got his, that was his first death. He got teleported by a big effect into this, like, endless And scene. that ended that sweet campaign pretty quickly. Yeah. All right, All right, so who wants to carry the sensor of Anacar? The bag tends to do that. It, yeah. The original Artemis I mean, campaign, we, we took a bag and then we like ended that, up in the middle of a mountain. Yes. So I, I shook magic. it and nothing happened. You have to fuel it with your soul. Do it. I'm not. Why would I do it now? So I'm they can I'm wipe at, your ass? I met him. <laughs> do you want to carry it or should I carry it? It's very valuable. I'll carry it. Who has the other artifact? The horn? Yeah. Oh, I have that. Oh, you are the lord of artifacts. Yeah, you're get swallowed well, up. In that case, someone, someone else could take the sensor. Alright, I'll take the sensor. Gold could take it. No. Oh, nobody I'll trust gold for okay. such things. Yeah, the useless horn. That's what he gets, yeah. Okay. That's that. That's why you came to the swamp. Yeah. Now what's there for, was. Oh, I can sensor? tell you guys. I can tell you guys this now because you 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 got it. Um, if you solved like that little puzzle, you could have. Uh, it would have been less deadly getting it. They all would have. But you needed. Uh, you needed to take water from both of those pools in the huge marshland, one for each of the eye globes. Mm. Mm. And then use that for the respective eyes. What was the teardrop of blood? That was just a false malarkey. Cl that was just a false clue from somebody fucking. A red herring, or a, I mean, so they, they actually came pretty close to what you had to do. If you understood the eyes to be those two mm -hmm. pools Which, in the marsh, then at one point, yeah. Thought, yeah, yeah, damn it. Well, but, we did, but we figured we'd just go in order. Right. We went yeah. to the yeah. one pool. You went to we one pool. Went to the we temple. But no one, yeah. no one took any water from that pool either. No. no. So yeah. Because so, right. we killed the. We killed the basilisk. Was, yeah. was Farwell yeah. the statue or the basilisk? Farwell is like, he's a uh, just the name of the pools. That I won't, I won't give you the name of the statue guy until later, but it, it's not Farwell. But he's in, he is, he's rubble now. You, you, you've oh, yeah. overcome him. So. <laughs> We took his sensor. You did. Right. Well, you took Anatar's sensor. Yeah. I think 
We should go to the lost city. Where's that on the map? So you want to detour the mission? There could be some pretty sweet stuff in well, the city. Lost city's over here. That it's a lost city. But if we go there, there's it'll be a found city. There's purported treasure there. Boom. Oh, there's purported treasure. And purported you are treasure. of Estelle. You would want yeah, to see I mean, this. if we... If there's treasure there, I'll find it. Guaranteed. So you can smell it out. He's got like that dwarf gold smell. And it's not Just that far out. out of our way. No, it looks to be like a couple hours away. Let me take a look at your map. I'm okay with that. Show me. Who who uh, heard the reports? Okay. Tyro. Yeah. When she was talking to Harold at the Hague Watch in... Mm. Yeah, and the guy who made me the map. And the so guy who that... made... Alright, so that's two... Those are two uh, two sources corroborating reports of treasure. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Um, what route are you going to take there from your current location? Ardith Bay, it suffice if you want to just trace it with your finger for me. Let me cover out and I'll get back in there 50... I, I have seen. <laughs> I am skirting the stay away area. Okay. Well, skirt. You are. Not it's kind of. Not. It's kind of vaguely defined, but yes. Well, I mean, I'm gonna be on the lookout for stuff that looks like I should stay away from. Okay. It. That that's that's appreciated. We'll camp yeah. right next to the stay away area. So we can look into it. All right. <laughs> it's mean, like a I line, a fourth field line. Kind of like poisonous Here, fog. good. Like, are you that seeing? Knows. Stay away. Who so, knows? I mean, I have an idea of this stay away zone. So okay. I'm going to be cognizant of it as I'm walking toward, you know. Sure. Let's see if I had my consciousness. He'd be all up in that stay away area. Yep. And while we're riding, fucking it up. I want to blow the horn of Oleg. Why? What does just it do? Just tooting on it like I just want to epic see sax it. guy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to blow it once. Oh, okay. So he, like, your, your view is like, why have this horn if you're never going to blow it? Right. Riding and blowing. And there's a lot of animals around, so I'm just going to see how they react. Okay. Riding and reaching. Riding I like that. Like All right, so it's about, you guys camped at the basilisk pool. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It, then it took you about three hours to get here from there. Um... So it's about maybe one or two in the afternoon. So yeah, plenty of travel time left. Ardith Bay, by your approximation, it'll take about maybe a day and a half to get to where the lost city is in the marshes. By my estimation, it will take about a day and a half yes. to get to the lost city. So by about sundown tomorrow. Well, luckily we're not in a hurry. <laughs> okay. Luckily we're not <laughs> dealing with the fate of the world. Yep, all right. Um, Thomas, as you, or Merrick, as you leave the temple, you sound your horn to let the whole marsh know that you are lord of all beasts. <laughs> so I will take a d20, uh, straight up d20 roll. Oh, so many dragons come after Eight. Eight, okay. Um, let's see. It's riding, reaching. Riding, riding and blowing. Yeah. All right. Um, you see... Well, is it safe to say you're, like, scanning the horizon and, like, your surroundings to see if, like, anything's, like, drawing near? Anything has happened. Yeah. Okay. There is, like, the 30 pack animals, or 40 pack animals we have. Yes. Do they I, respond? They, yeah, they all kind of draw a little bit closer to you, and they look at you with warm eyes. Warm. They, they like you. You're fucking up our formation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and about uh, roll a d12. There's not too much life in the swamp. Eight. Okay, eight carrion buzzards fly down to you and line up for you. Cool. There's chicken, well tonight. chicken wings. <laughs> yeah. Carrion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the air fryer. Holy I have to conjure one. <laughs> I see. Uh, <laughs> Conjure some sriracha too. I asked them to hop on one foot. He wants to see the depth see if of his command. Did they listen to me or like? See. What's up? He said he asked them to hop on one foot. Just one. The buzzards. Yeah. Okay. Um. 
they uh, they all do so, and then they fly away. So the horn worked Got for one. Got a hell of an artifact there. There's one can command one time apparently. Bird. This time birds. Next time who That knows? artifact leaves much to be desired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's you used it the right way in May. Yeah. It could it sure be. did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well um Ardith Bay can get you guys um uh, a good chunk of the way. Um and at about 5 p.m. You uh, come to a a kind of overgrown field of mines that have just sprung out from the ground and kind of weave over the surface the serviceable areas. Mines? Vines. Oh, okay. So you can still proceed, but it will be more slowly. Do they look like sickly? Um, like aberrant vines? Unnatural? So they have flowers. They're kind of bright yellow flowers. Do I recognize this flora? Uh, you can give me a will challenge roll with a bane. So it'll be your will mod. A d20? Yeah, it'll be a d20 to start, yep. Yeah. Critical fail. Okay. I do not. Artith know Bay. You eat them? Put these up. Artith Bay goes up to the vine to inspect it. And um, she uh, she stoops over to inspect it, and uh, she's affected by a very pungent scent that issues from the flower. And she is attacked by vines. Hmm. So she's like being kind of restrained. Well, they're they're in the process of attacking her right now, so we'll see what the result of that will be. Okay. Before we can even really react. Right. This was the the fifth fail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ardith Bay takes four damage, and. The vine has started coiling around her, and you see the whole field of vines has kind of come alive. So now you all may react. How many? It's kind of like your path in front of you. It's hard to count exactly how many. Right. Mm. Let's just start cutting. Start slicing. Start cutting and start fireballing. I don't have no fireballs, but I'll attack the vines. Are you going to direct your men to do so as well? Mm -hmm. Like, just charge yeah. type, type thing? I will cast Force Barrier. All right. Directly in front of Gyro, between her and the vines. Okay. So it's ten yards long, ten yards tall, one inch thick. All right. That'll break the grab on Ardith Bay. So all of a puts sudden, us a barrier between us and like the vine. Like you get kind of pushed back, and the vine gets pushed back. So you guys sep you separate from the vine. Do we kind of see the vine still Thanks. trying to like hit the barrier? Like oh yeah, yeah, they're all kind of writhing, and uh, I wonder if this is the stay away zone. It could be. Um, so you're going to be sword attacking. Is there a barrier between us now? Well, he can dismiss it when he wants to. I would never. You're going to keep it there? Why would you charge in there? How long does no, it last? I didn't last? say I was. It lasts for one hour. 
Okay. I'm just wondering, like, through. is is a threat still imminent? You don't see. They don't seem to be successfully circumventing the barrier. They don't have like enough length to just like come over the top or anything like that. So mm. they're they're kind of. Are you just gonna observe for now then? It's like a zoom. Be interesting to see how they All react. Right. Yeah. After about five minutes, the activity calms down and they return to like a passive state. Do we have to go through them? I don't think so. You could probably circumvent the area. It would delay you, but Ardith Bay could lead for a look for a way around. Unless we have like Molotov cocktails or something. I don't think throwing your men in there is a good idea. No, they will probably be I if, if Athena who is, Ardith is far more dexterous than my men. How long does this vine group mm. extend? Um, well, you've got your own eyes to kind of survey the area, um, and I'll take a group intellect roll, so you can have one point, and then, I'm assuming you'll be on point for this, Artemis, sure. thinking of the highest intellect. And I get a boom. Okay, yep, you get a boom, you'll get, um, I got an 18. You got an 18. Well, I rolled a 16, rolling? but yeah. my intellect Yeah, everyone can roll. Old. But this will kind of just influence our uses. Two. I got a 16. Um, 23. Okay. Um, Thomas, here. help me. <laughs> the, uh, all the vines have kind of been emitting like a sightless gas, pretty much. And it for a while, it, upon your early inspections, it looked like it was just endless in that direction. But eventually, you're able to come to your wits, and you do see that by going out of your way, you can find a way around. So it takes a little while, but you get back on the path. Nice. Um, by that point, though, it is about time to make camp, unless you want to travel through the night. That would be a bad idea. Okay. Because I need my spells back. All right. So you can, you guys can make camp then. Okay. I think between the fifty men. You still have. It's actually the forty. Five. It's the forty-five men now. Mm -hmm. That's still plenty to do rotating uh, watch mm. shifts. So that'll get you covered. You got any healing left, Mert, before the end of the day? A little bit. Use it. Who's got the sensor? Well, I have it. Um, okay. I mean, I've got three three rounds of normal cure. That sounds good. Which would give I can either heal. Those are half up. rate, half healing rate, or I can remove insanity if anybody wants that. Oh, sure. So. I have five. Half healing rate, round up. Yeah, but, so, round my up. guy gets to roll a boon on casting life spells. I think that's even on healing. That doesn't matter. Life spells don't have attacks. Exactly. So why you, why would I some cast? Them must have. They don't. Not a single one. I, I'd have to look, but I don't think there's I any. So what would I be? Well, one. I'll look at all yeah, of them and tell one. you. But they're not meant to be attack. It's never an attack. So what why would you have? Power? Why would somebody? It's one of my uh, oh, class things. Why would it give you a boon when the the thing never has any attacks? Well, point is, I'll spread it to. Well, Thomas, how's your insanity? Thomas has no insanity. He has five. Five insanity. Okay. Then you get two of the cures for that. But if you have a boon, does that mean I, I cure an extra 1d6 insanity? I don't. I don't okay. No, I don't. The normal shadow thing. Life, the n zero is you know the location. Minor healing, you heal. Cure, you heal. What about Cause this? Of life. Destroy death. Make a will attack roll against strength if it's undead. That's the only one. There and you go! And that's not in the normal. That's in occult uh, <laughs> philosophy. And that's the only one that well, does that. Have him rule on it then. I don't care. 
What am I ruling on? So you're destroying death, from what I understand. No, I know. Okay. The crew. I think it's either crusader or priest gave gives me a benefit, like a, a feature that okay. says casting life spells. I make with one boon. No, there are no attacks in the life spell domain. Okay. So how? What's the boon doing for me? Is it giving me a d6 extra of healing? I'm gonna take a look quick. You've intrigued me, Merc. And that's what Adam found the one spell which is not in the base book that actually is can can attack, but also can heal. Or if it was uh, Crusader who gave me that. No, it was Crusader. D3. Oh, there comes the purring. You know where the D3 is, Thomas? Is that near your cheat? There it is. So you took two. Two insanity. Two insanity away. I do have four whole um, destroyed deaths. Adam, you get three HP. I get two HP. Thomas, you get three HP. And I get three HP. So I get five. He doesn't have any claws in he trimmed him. Oh, he might fart in your face, though. <laughs> he gets really relaxed and the sphincter loosens. <laughs> Anything could fly. So, Adam, you get three. Three, ones. and the, you get the other cure, the half healing rate one. Okay, well then. So, whatever that was, five? or uh, What's your healing rate, three? Yeah, if we sleep, I will be at full. Okay. Because you get, what, double healing rate? Is there more? Than you rest? I thought it was just normal. Or normal. Maybe it's 24 hours is double. Maybe, yeah. Hmm. It's not just healing rate tonight. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Mert, I'm beginning, I'm very close to ruling that the boon can apply as like a static increase to what you're healing or something like that is I feel like those spells are kind of those are utility spells not attack spells uh -huh. so they don't follow the rules of I mean that's a huge buff to minor healing yeah I don't even have that spell <laughs> isn't that what you were, you, oh, you were no. using cure cure <coughs> and destroy that let me just but cure is oh yeah yeah gives half yeah, okay. yeah. which isn't very sure. much either <laughs> Mert, for minor healing, are you looking at the log or at the description for it right now? Yeah, and I don't, I don't have that spell, but I. You don't. No, I have cure. Is cure in the this book? Do yes. You think? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's, I have. It's the level one life spell. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Let me take a look at that. So it gives you options. Like, like I, I cured Thomas insanity. I don't think I should be able to roll a d6 on that. But I think on healing it would make sense. Okay, so what's your class that that came from? Mm, 
priest. All right, here's how I'm going to rule it. Okay. So there's some spells where if you have an attack 20 or plus, you get a bonus effect. So you'll get a boon when rolling for cure. Okay. And you've got that boon now, so let's just go ahead and roll a d20 and add a boon. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, with the boon? Yeah. Nine. Okay. So, nothing happens in this instance. Okay. I was going to grant you, if you got over 20 with the boon, gotcha. you'd get to choose more than one effect. Okay. Because with okay. cure, you get to choose one of those. I was going to say you could do two of them if you get the over 20. Okay. So you didn't get that from Priest. No, I didn't. That, it, it, get it must be Crusader. And I didn't get a chance to look it up. Maybe I... <laughs> I just wrote it down that way. It's in... Making shit up? No. Trying to pull a fast one on Ziggy? Yeah. I wrote it down how I wrote it down. I bet you did. That doesn't mean that that's exactly how it words, but... Okay. You guys make camp. You take your rest. Rest your gentle. What's that thing? Uh, now go and rest your heroes. From yeah. AB. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. If you extend your rest to a full twenty-four hours, then you get double your healing. Rate. So healing is healing is rough. Ghostbusters. Yeah. So we get healing rate once the rest is over. Is it over? I don't know. That I don't know. What are you asking? If the rest is over. You guys rest with no issue. So, um, so did you get all your spells back? Yeah, of course you get all your spells okay, back. Okay, so that part you do. Okay. Yeah, it puts two HP left. That right. rest leaves a little to be desired. I have uh, 15 HP I still need to, to get back. Uh, so much healing. We can stay here for 24 hours. Yeah. That would only give you Good. four sleep, more. Sleep <laughs> among the vines. <laughs> Just sleep with the vines in its sweet embrace. So while we're resting, can I take it? What's your healing heal rate for? Yes. Five. Well, well, how do you base. How, how, what is healing rate based I on? Use one action four. to heal self by huh? healing. One four. Nimble recovery. Actually, should yeah, more than so five then. Basically, each rest. from Keep the last time four? you took damage. One fourth mm -hmm. of your max. Oh, yeah. healing? Yeah. Right, so yeah, you'll you get it's your like, healing rate now. It's like that. fourth edition. Oh. oh, mine should be like four. seven. Oh, eight. mine's eight. I've been doing this wrong. Yeah, me too. Oh, goodness. I think I gotta bump mine up. I'm, I'm at full with all the things we yeah, just mine did. should be five. Mm -hmm. I think you, you gained... 15 additional healing from... Uh, I was giving myself 4. My Seven. healing rate should have been 8. Um, All the spots that I was getting full healing rate should have been a lot more HP. I forgot about... I didn't think about the whole bloody... It's like the... Yeah, healing surge value, right? Adam? Yeah, 1-4. Jeez, oh, how did I not... Oh, I forgot that when my HP won, Damn, huh? My, yeah, that's the thing. And what's your health? 33. What's your HP, man? 20? 20. Yeah, so you have a 5. Yep. And what's yours? What's your healing rate? 30. So well, you're at... 7 healing rate. 7. That's... Oh, yeah, you should have gotten more, too. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then it doesn't seem so vicious. <laughs> yeah. I was healing at a much slower rate. Than I... All right, we're prepared to press on. We're prepared to figure out what we're going to do next. Are we going to go skirt along the vines now? Is that the plan? Yeah, go around them. Did we already do that? No. Mm, we stopped for camp. Oh. Yep. But you can discern a path. You were able to shake out of the, the hazy aura of the vines. So with Ardeth Bay's capable leadership, you head around the vines. I'm assuming you bear more on that map thing. You would bear more that. Yeah, okay. Okay, I found Mert's bullshit. Did I write it wrong? When you cast a Celestial, Life, or Theurgy spell, you make attack rolls with one boon for one That's round. That's why Celestial has a lot of attack rolls. Yeah. 
So wipe it from the record, Ziggy. He didn't, he didn't get the he benefit. swindled you. Yeah, he didn't get the benefit of it, so <laughs> well, it's okay. Well, I think I was gonna go Celestial when we oh. were characters in life. Yeah. Everybody, so you tried to cheat the game. But why include life? Life has no attack. Destroy life. death. That's the only power. Well, they had to enough. include it. <laughs> It's the only reason when I saw Crusader, I was like, ooh. Not because of this, but... Big fat cheater. Um, well, that's well, what I'm here for. That's true. <laughs> well, it just like, if it was adding to healing spells, you could just say, like... Right, yeah. It wouldn't, yeah. I'm always trying to cheat. <laughs> just like Bill, who would rewrite his whole character sheet on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> when did he do that? All the time, he'd be like, I have a 37 intelligence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember that shit? Well, he wouldn't go that high, but he would definitely have, like... I don't remember him, like, changing. All of his stats would be, like, at 15 or something. <laughs> I don't recall. Okay, well, it happened a couple yeah. times. I, just, I remember when he had battleships and he wasn't supposed well, to. Well, yeah, we all remember that. that. Nope, it... It makes sense to me. And when he tried to claim that he could turn Samuel into a ashes. <laughs> Maybe he could do that. I don't All right. remember. Um, <laughs> that was God Bounce. It yeah. seems more yeah. probable. It's, uh, it's always um, tiring, slow going, and creepy slow moving going. through the marshes. But heading heading around the, the tangled covering of vines, you are able to get back onto something of a, a path. And at the end of another day's travel, you've come to the edge of uh, some ruined structures. Um, definitely, you see the rema remains of long abandoned avenues, streets. There, there is a network of ruins ahead of you, so you've come to the edge of the lost city. Nice. So, it's, so we have it's no information again. on the lost city, obviously, at all. You, from the only information you have is that Adventurers often come here looking for treasure. And, and they I never come out. Analyze the architecture and see if I recognize any specific bits from history. If there's any, like, language or glyphs. All right. Um, I'll let you do an intellect with two banes, which I know will be a will. Is this history? Yes. I'll pray for you, Adam. Well, so you get a boon. If I make a professional intellect roll, I get three boons. Oh, and okay. I do have history as one of my professions. All right. So you won't need. It won't need to be will. No, I won't make it will. All right. So you're at net one yeah. boon right now, and then Mert's praying for you. How many yeah. professions do you guys have? Four. I have languages yeah, I have in three. my professions box. That's you not can either take good. like a language or a profession. Oh, okay. So, okay. I'm a militia member, a devotee, a war. A uh, scholar and a detective. I'm a scholar. Ten. And magic. Ten. Okay. I'm a hunter. Did my boon trapper. help at all? Yeah, I rolled a six. That's, <laughs> that's good. All right. Um. So you can uh, deduce that this was a most likely a human settlement uh, during its heyday. <laughs> you tell that, us this in the first phase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, not dwarves or elves, because um, elves are pretty scary in demon lore. You That's whatever, that much, right? Um, They're like the ones in divinity. You notice, right. even organs. You notice that there are a number of structures that, however, have much larger doorways than uh, mm. than what you would expect. So, either there was like a sub race, uh, uh, overlords. Art of, like some something here was larger than typical humans. Like, it doesn't just look like it's some grand like when castle. You say correct, correct. It looks these are functional dwellings. They're, they're not like they're not like cere mm -hmm. big ceremonial. So we're panels. all close to like six foot tall people. Five five big. You're humans. in the so. you're in the five foot to six foot range. Yeah. yeah. So and, and what if, are if you the want size of these doors comparative to us? Um, there's. I guess if you're looking more specifically at that, there are some of the, again, it's some, some. of the structure, not all of them. Mm -hmm. Some of them look built for something about nine or ten feet tall. Space Marines. 
Does it look giants? Like, does it look like war befell this city, or was it something more subtle? Coincidentally, I've studied war. That's great. Yeah. So I could tell the markings of that. All right. Artemis has gotten from. his role. <laughs> Mert, if you want to push, push I'd like. The study. I'd be interested to All see. Right. You can give me an intellect check, and since Artemis is able to give you some information, you can add a boon to okay. it. Uh, 19. Okay. Mert uh, takes, takes on special interest in looking for certain artifacts and signs uh, after Artemis poses the question, you know, what befell this place. And after about half an hour of kind of searching some of the outer buildings, Mert, to you, it seems like this town did have a violent end. You see, um, basically, from damages to buildings, mm. smashed, um, like, archaeological so, stuff. Like It wasn't crafting. just like the place was abandoned because yeah. of... But it, you get the feeling that the violence began from within the city, not, mm. not being conquered by an external force. Mm, okay, okay. Civil war. Yeah. Or something, or a revolt, an by uprising. The time, by the time Mert finishes his examination, mm -hmm. uh, it's about a little before 9 p.m. And all of you are aware, regardless of what your perception skill is, that every now and then you do hear, like, movement from deeper within the ruins. Like, running footsteps, um, like, something kind of clanging... I will take to the sky. Okay. Is it bright out still at all? Is I mean any light out technically? Okay. No. There is there is um like a growing a waxing crescent moon. Okay. That's giving you your light and then patches and that's when there's not a patch of clouds in front of it because you guys are it, it actually gets clearer at nighttime in the marsh, but mm -hmm. during the day it's usually cloudy. Okay. Um you see Artemis fly up into the sky. Um, and he shot down where he... They have perception <laughs> in Demon Lord, right? They yeah. sure do. It's one of our skills. What is your perception, Artemis? Passively? Yes. 12. Okay. Um, and perception is modified by... Intellect. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. So intellect. roll a d20. So your end is worse than mine. The higher your perception... This is a dynamic difficulty roll. 12. Okay. On the dot. Yeah. Well, and you can guess it doesn't increase with perception, because that wouldn't make sense. Like, right. if you have, like, an amazing perception, I wouldn't require an 18 mm -hmm. roll, so. All right, Artemis. You see, um, as you get to about maybe 200 feet up, so you've got a pretty good view of the city. It's not a massive, um, you know, just sprawling for miles and miles in all directions. It's it's, it's a manageable size. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably from up here you could see it would probably take about twenty minutes to walk from one end to the other. Um, okay. There were two creatures on one of the rooftops, mm -hmm. uh, roughly humanoid in shape, not in size, bigger. Mm. That upon your ascent you saw them like jump down and take cover like behind one of the buildings so they they seem to be aware of you and, and hid mm. i see you <laughs> Jeez. we're That's like we, we see him do Are this and we're like see? yeah we know yeah. buddy we know you see us and how close are they to the the rest of the group they were towards the center of the city okay so about a 10 minute walk yeah, or about like three minutes sprinting. Mm. Yep. Well, either it's. I don't see any other lights or movement or anything. Oh no, there, there's like definitely no it's, lamps or lamp. It's okay, just still. these skulking creatures in the middle of this ruin. All right, I will descend. Back towards your fellows. Yeah. Okay. There are large creatures skulking. They notice me. How large and how skulking? Well, humanoid, 
probably about nine, ten feet, perhaps. Yep. Um, they hid when they saw me, so I don't know their intentions. We could be scared. We could handle two, I'm certain, but if they have a whole nest, <laughs> yeah, right, we can right below the avoid. the ground, yeah. just five I mean, thousand sort of way around them. <laughs> they they were right in the center of the city. Yeah, let them flee, or let them skull. Artemis. How Might many languages do you know? All of them. Do you believe Every you could language. communicate with them? Indubitably. I, that what might be say? wise. <laughs> what? What did you just say? Indubitably? Does that mean definitely yes? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. My words leave a little to be desired. <laughs> 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 we came back around to that. It's um, going to be a theme. So I yeah. think it's best if we camp outside the city. To not... In is there already Make them again? feel threatened. Oh, Jesus. Okay. And then tomorrow we can root them out, set set fire to the the ruins until they're smoked out. I feel like a peaceful way might be the better. Yeah. Maybe probably. they are something we can um, in our battle against Zuknu. Maybe they. Could be convinced. Maybe. I don't know what the hell they're doing here, but anything's possible. Well, maybe it's just their home. But we will rest. I would say... Are there a lot of woods around? Can we build a decent fire? We're in a marsh. Oh, yeah. Not it's so been, It's already been cheerless and miserable, uh, but... You guys are one artifact up now. All right. Well, let us rest. And tomorrow we will meet the inhabitants of this lost city. Okay. Um, and I obviously, my men understand about them and so on. They've been given foreknowledge that yeah. there are these big creatures inside. Yep. Okay. They seem afraid of us, but you never know. Alright. The night passes. Nice. That confirms to me that they are not aggressive. I don't know if that's a confirmation, well, but it's good. It lends credence to the theory, I guess. You yes, say. correct. I think we should try to speak with them. Okay, well, walk us off. Tell them you see them. Fly up. Oh, what a great way to celebrate a 90th. It seems more intimidating. Yeah. It does, yeah. yes. I think that's why they were afraid. Maybe they've never Born seen magic. Down. Such Born. as ours. They're going to see a lot of it. Yeah, they're going to see plenty. Uh, let's walk through the city towards the building where I saw them hide. Okay. I'd like you to describe the nature of your procession. Okay. Weapons drawn, nice. organized march. <laughs> I guess you could say that's on one end. <laughs> Torches, singing the mob song from Beauty and the Beast. Mm. That, just, that's one end. But, yeah, just how, how do you, how do you just, how do you conduct yourself? There's no way not to be intimidating with 50, yes. 40, 45. So I yeah, would oh, say... You guys like make that. exactly 50, 50 with yeah. gold. Yeah. 51 with Hubert, Hubert. But yeah, okay. Only back this whole time. I Maybe. would say then we try, because we have that, such a number, is no weapons out, no magic shown yet. They already know you can fly, obviously. You're going to leave some dudes here? Do we all need to go? Or no. Or do, just send, do you just send a small party? Or should we only go? I think that's... Leave my menace. We're fine. We don't need your dude. All right. Yeah, that's less menacing. I will tell... Would you be okay I bring Kane and Seamus along? You Only trust two it, men? Sure. Okay. Okay. So and we up. leave Gulk, obviously, here okay. with them, too. <laughs> but yes, I think that is wiser to bring a smaller contingent. All right. Um, you are the one they haven't seen, Artemis. They don't see my face. You must, you must show them you are not... Their adversary. You guys proceed through the city. It's uh, morning. 
there are six of you with Seamus and uh, Kane. Mm-hmm. Is, it? Yeah. is that K A N E? Nice. Is that a wrestler? <laughs> it Kane's, is. They yeah, both wrestler. are, but they were names in the shadow yeah. for humans. Kane is Undertaker's well, brother. K A I N. That's the best Kane. Like the one from the video game. The video game, <laughs> right? Wait, why is C A I N not the best then? Kane De- Deckard? Are you kidding me? Deckard Kane. Deckard Kane. Yeah. It's a last name. Uh, all yeah, right, all right. Get to the room. You proceed through the main avenue towards the building, um, and uh, yep, yeah, it's eerily quiet in the Lost City. And you are in front of the building. There's no activity inside of it. Or that you can see right now. Like no one came out of the structure to greet you. It's I a, knock it's a two story th- structure. Slow down. All right. Not you. All right. Not me. Uh, he sees me going. Like it's a two story structure that has like a rooftop terrace as well. So oh, it's like. Mean. You like you go out onto this balcony, and then there's a little another winding step that goes. So it's up a pretty there. nice lost oh, city. Sure, I mean at one point I'm sure it was a very thriving. Yep. I will shout. Uh, Hello there. We wish you no harm. Okay. Um, very silently, out of the main floor of the building. The first thing you see is like some hands like kind of grasping the doorway and you see like this pale bald headed creature kind of look at you through the doorway. It then stoops out, rises to its full prominence um, and one follows up right after it. Um, As you expected, they're about (coughs) nine feet tall. Um, they appear to be male. They're not, they're just these mm. naked, um, <laughs> artists, cover your eyes. Yeah, your eyes. yeah these naked, naked big <laughs> male giants. parts are showing. Say naked Jews. Giants. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> um, and wow. as Jeez. they silently regard you, not trees, you either. see, uh, some of the neighboring structures as well. There are some more emerging. And at, at, when all is said and done, as they're kind of all respo- responding to Artemis's call, you see there are 11 of them. Mm. Mm. And they've kind of formed like a loose circle around you. Not like, like, an ins- like a, a surrounding formation, right. but that's just kind of the way they all kind of came out of their structure. And they're kind of just staring at you, unblinking. So they, they've assembled here. But they haven't really reacted beyond that. I have a question, but I'll let you go first. Well, mine was more retroactive. In our study of Flashback. the city, and the did we see any symbols of any god? Uh, well, here's the thing: um, you examined like the outbuildings mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because you you were just researching a very specific purpose, like what happened here. Yeah. Artemis flew over the city at night. Uh, which doesn't allow for a lot of detail. Correct. So I, I'll say as of yet, no, but you okay. don't feel confident that you've done like a, a comprehensive search. Yeah, correct. correct. We are travelers in your city. We thought it uninhabited. The Solomon Khan? Yeah, for now. I'm speaking in common. I don't know what, what they speak. Okay. Um,. You see the first one who emerged after you say... Could you repeat exactly... Do you remember what you exactly said? We are travelers in your city. We thought it uninhabited. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you're studying his face very carefully (laughs) as you're saying this. All right. You do notice you have a high intellect that right after you said uh, your city, there's like a very small like smile that forms on his lips. Mm. So he seems to take a pride in, in that particular piece of what you said. But apart from that, he doesn't react further. Can you tell us what happened here? 
Okay, at this, they kind of, like, look to each other. And, uh... One of the ones from the side steps forward. And, uh... Like, beckons you over to one of the structures. Just him? Silently. All... Yes, just one of them moves, yep. No, I mean just Adam, just Artemis. Oh, that is impossible to determine. Mm. He's beckoning towards your group, okay. but none of them have spoken, so... I will approach. Okay. Um, he uh, moves in in front of you, and then it's kind of creepy because he's so... He's got this big face that you see is like... And it's like dark inside there, but you see him like... <laughs> Appear in nothing. Okay. Uh, you go in. He, uh, this looks to have been at one point a dwelling, you know, just one of the people living in town. It not of uh, these bigger folks. You see, he had to go to like pains to kind of get through, mm -hmm. but there is like a stairwell leading like right down to a basement, and you can see like the bottom, and you see him kind of like work his way down there, and then once he's down there, he beckons you again. I'm gonna cast read minds. Okay. And I will focus on this man's mind. All right. Yeah. As an 18 versus his will. Okay. He, uh, you see him like grimace a little bit, as if he's like aware of what's happening. But, Take it. Um, hmm. you get, you get the. Uh, the impression that this psyche is about as mature as, like, maybe a six- or seven-year-old child. Okay. Um, and... But I could still ascertain intent. Yeah, there's no murderous intent. Okay, that, that's good, that's good. Okay. Then I'll go down. All right. You've been led into what looks like a laboratory mm. or a workshop of some kind. You see there's a large, like, stone table, and there's still the remnants of, like, bindings on the table of leather. Like, at one point, some creature of roughly this uh, being size was probably laid out on the table. And now you have to be pretty close to this thing, because you're, you're in this basement space with mm -hmm. him. You see he is... A lot of strange stitch marks throughout his body, as if he's been assembled and patched together. Okay. And he kind of gestures to his different body parts, gestures back to the table, and then he points to a wall in which you see some hanging implements and surgical tools that are long rusted but are still identifiable. Hmm. And then, after you've had time to regard these, you see him kind of also looking over at the implements and back at the table, and then he just kind of <laughs> slams the table, and uh, he creates, like, a big poof of, like, dust as he, like, made these big indentations into the stone table. So he seems quite strong and mm -hmm. emotionally angered at this space, but it seems like he was trying to answer your question as best he could. You now feel uncomfortable down here. <laughs> like, he's definitely agitated showing you this. Can you not speak? He just, he turns his head to the side and, like, snorts. And that's the only response you get. Hmm. And from that, I learned their whole language. <laughs> it, no. <laughs> he seems to understand you, but he doesn't seem... There's no, like, books. books or anything in this laboratory. No, no. Okay, I will nod, and then I'll start heading back up. Okay. He waits for you to get up, and then you see him awkwardly make his way up the little staircase. Mm. Something so they're, bad. They're, they're, they're golems? I'm thinking Frankenstein. They were used for slave labor? Something. And they outlived their masters? They revolted? Something. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And that's why they like it being called their city? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Or that that's a good, good that's way. a good takeaway from this. 
I blow well, the horn. you I need blow to be put back to work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they outlived their masters, yeah. maybe destroyed their masters. Yeah, now they're just Let's... aimless. Did you just go in, or is it all of us? It was no, just, just, just Artemis. Just so we don't even know they're all of us. No. Well, we have to bring up the delicate topic of treasure, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You do. Of which they probably don't appreciate the value of. But maybe they do. How do you frame it in the right way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to Unless what I just I mean, it's, it's a city, so there's... Yeah. Do you get a sense of the treasure? Oh, that's true. You, your... Oh, yeah. Your treasure sense is tingling. It's tingling. In oh, fact, it's tingling from the main house where that first one emerged from. I let the group know. They're holding. <laughs> okay. Oh, the moment you speak to the group and not... Like direct, like you clearly weren't directly addressing them, mm -hmm. and this right as Artemis is getting back out of the house, you see them all just look at you, and it's very uncomfortable. I blow the horn. <laughs> <laughs> seems, seems like a good way to okay. incite a conflict. Um, You're right. I don't know. No. Do you stop yourself? Yeah. Your lips are on the horn, and you think better of it. Yeah. I okay. Because they're not really gonna fall for it. Okay. I don't think the horn's actually going to work on them. But it might summon a marsh alligator or something. Yeah. They are, they're all staring at the horn as you, like, put it away. <clears throat> Do you require... All right, they're all looking at you now. Do you require <laughs> food or supplies? We have some to spare. I go hungry. Okay. You see them kind of, like, looking curiously at what you were referring to. Like, because you probably have some loaded on, like, a, a beast or something. Probably, mm -hmm. yeah, we got some rash. Okay. One of them approaches the beast, but then looks back at you. Do you have anything to trade? Um, he gently picks up the beast. <laughs> He's just, like, holding it, like, up, like a cat or something. He's very you know? strong. Oh, no, he's yeah. <laughs> and he brings it back over to the others and they're they're all kind of like stooping down looking at it and you see them all kind of just ungainly kind of like grin and they seem happy about it and then you've got their attention again after they are like done kind of reveling in their new new possession which is one of your beasts plus x cool. amount of supplies so you can you can repeat your question now mm -hmm. We will give you food, and you can give us something in return. Okay, the the foremost one, he's like slightly taller, and he has like a big, a prominent scar that runs across his top of his forehead. He looks at you, and he seems to be weighing what you said. And he, uh, he goes back into his house. And... He, uh, he emerges a couple minutes later, and he, uh, he comes back with a, uh, a simple, uh, crown of tarnished silver. Hmm. Hmm. Did you want to cast... Sense magic, okay. sure. Yeah. Um, just roll a d20. Uh, it doesn't, but... Nine. Okay. Oh, that's that's good. It wasn't a straight up, like, 50-50, but there was a high higher crit fail range. Um, but you did not strike that. They, uh... Oh, well, first of all, you, you detect considerable magic power from this crown. So you feel it is of great value. Mm. Uh, so... Um, you see, oh, I'll just say the Promethean. That's okay. that's the, yeah, mm, that works. Yeah, mm. the Promethean holds out his arms. Um, he has the crown in one hand, mm -hmm. and you see him raise it like higher, so that his other arms below. He gestures to the pack animal you just gave. And after he does that, you see him raise his left 
arm a little bit and lower the right arm a little bit, but you see they're not even. Not mm -hmm. equal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we I use the center of Anatar and I slaughter them. That's that's one option. All right, you guys got anything to offer? Hubert? Maybe they'd like Hubert. Would they like the horn? Golk. <laughs> yeah, would they like the horn? Oh, oh the horn? Would they like death. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could trade the horn. I'm sure they'd like that. Um, so, so what did you sense from when that you it's explained it? Like, yeah, it's very so magical. It's probably an, it's probably an artifact. I'll idea. say that in the medicine. Uh, you know what? I think the horn is a fair trade. I'll demonstrate them. Can you communicate to them that I'm about to demonstrate? <laughs> As well as the next man. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. We will give you magical horn. Very powerful. He will show you. Do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> Roll a D12. It's not a trumpet. <laughs> five. Okay. You get five buzzards to I descend from the, the sky. Well, it's just, it's limited. You're in a marshland. There's there's tons of like really? eels yeah. and stuff. I mean, if they use it, that's what it's gonna be. Yeah, so. but that could be food. okay. Yeah, it's food. Oh. At first, they're highly alarmed, and the the atmosphere grows tense. But then you see them kind of looking up with childlike wonder as the birds land and seem to like respect and are listening to what you say. So now they're in the neat little line for you again. You hear them actually making like very faint sounds, like. Like they're, they're, they are reacting to this. Yeah. I'll just I'll just say I'll have them bow. Oh, the bird. Okay. To the Promethean. Okay. Um. All right. Um. They you, they they seem very pleased with this demonstration, and the leader of the Prometheans. Um, gestures to the horn that he's holding and you see him making like a large motion with his his balancing hand mm -hmm. so it looks like he'd be pleased and it would accept that initially no, well not all right thomas or merrick do you go and hand him the horn sure all right as the and his hand is quite massive mm -hmm. but as you put the horn into his hand you see him lower his other hand for you to reach out and grab the crown from it all right, you you have it in your hands, and uh, you see uh, you see them all kind of gather. They seem to lose interest in your whole party and are just gathered around their new the possessions. Horn. Yeah, and the and the one pack animal with the uh, oh, they can they clearly consider that to be theirs. So yes. unless you want to try and wrench it back from them, no, they can eat it. They can have it. They all right. Can. Well, um, so. What I need would, to I need to design that uh that crown. What is the name of this crown? I'm it's forthcoming. Okay. But you have it and it, it it's it's good. It's you'll pro I'm sure you'll enjoy it more than the horn, so Okay. Um So yeah, as I mentioned, they're all kind of just examine they're like taking turns looking at the horn, like passing it around. And you see some of them are eating some of like the bags of uh food preserves and stuff off the uh the animal you gave them. Oh, that's good. Alright. <clears throat> it seems a little strange, but Mert definitely feels like a soft spot for these guys. Yeah. Like they their innocence and their like Yeah. You know, even their it's like inability. They may have committed crimes, but it was wasn't their Understood. fault. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, he wants to, uh, kind of. He tries to. He brings out the whip, but it's all <laughs> no, but it's all like this, like in his hands, like this, not like this, but like this. <laughs> and when you initially yeah. said to me, it was like gem encrusted, so it's fancy. It's it a is, fancy. Yeah. Thing. It's. It's precious. I, I try to like give them this and say, friends. Okay. So I want them to like understand, and I put it on the ground next to them. Okay. You see one. He like looks at you, looks at the whip. Um, he gets that little smile, mm. and he picks it up, and 
it doesn't seem like he really knows what to do with it, no, but you see Could be him, a toy to him. Yeah, he keeps turning it, like, catching whatever daylight he can so that the little jewels are, like, sparkling in the light, and he's just dazzled by it. Yeah. And he seems quite happy, and he goes and shows his friends. That's what I... All right. Your your generosity has been noted. Yeah. <laughs> They're childlike, uh... Artemis is ready to hear that whip start <laughs> cracking, <laughs> like, now rending, rending flesh. Yeah. Bring out the whip. <laughs> that sounds like Tom is saying yeah. they, could, they need new masters. <laughs> Bring out the whip. That's terrible. On hand, though. That's <laughs> terrible. On hand. Uh, well, once the crown thing, I think we move we've made new friends. We know something. We've discovered something that most don't know about, which is very interesting. So, I, mean, so, I don't know if they want to come with us or not. I don't, I don't even know if we can communicate that. Do we even want them? Well, they'd probably be really you know, good. Or me, they'd be smashing. Right, if they were loyal. Hey, Adam. Them. That's what the wins Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. If we accomplish our mission, we got an airship. We can come then. Once we have the airship, drop bomb we could. Airship. No, we could come back and return and show them the airship and maybe invite them then. But I don't think they're right now in in a position to come with us. Yeah. And yeah, why would they? I just, why would they? Right, I'm a little untrustful. Though I feel like they might get frustrated and just like pound us. Well, and uh, I mean, yeah, right. I'm not going to comment too much right no, now. No. Yes. Right. Well, that I don't want to give just open faced advice. Right, yeah. right. I, 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 I think of them like trolls in, in The Witcher. <laughs> Have you been playing more Witcher? Yeah. Oh, good for you. <laughs> I just did the just, troll mission. What level is Ger your Geralt now? Uh, uh, it's been a little while. There's 20 something. Oh, that's good. I think, I, think I, I hit like 54. But by the time I had done like the expansion stuff after completing the game, so, so, so yeah, after all the expansion stuff was fifty four. Yes, okay. yes, because it it slow it slows how, down a bit. How after. long is like the the main campaign? Is uh, I think it's Skelligard, the last area. No, it's not. No. Okay, um, and I still have ways to go. Yeah, but that's okay. You should hopefully you're at the point where you you don't want it to just end. No, you want no. it to keep going. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. Um. Oh. Yep, blend in time. Yep. Can't believe Witcher is pretty That game came out already all the way in 2015. I feel like I thought that game was newer than that. What's that? Witcher, Witcher 3. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's got all the hype around it now because of the show. Right. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, do you guys take your leave of the Prometheans? Yeah. All right. Um, they, uh, they watch you as you leave, but they kind of remain in their town center. Um, the one you gave the chain, or the je jeweled whip to, uh -huh. you see like, as you're leaving, he's like almost like waving at you and you just hear the whip cracking in the air. It's kind of humorous. Yeah, like, yeah. But, because it, it would look pretty threatening under other circumstances. Correct. But you, but you, I know don't, you don't have that feeling no. from it, so, no. yeah. All right, well done. That was probably that was probably the deadliest potential situation you guys were in. They're very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> so Thomas is just about to blow that. Yeah. Well, that's why when when so he well flew done, up well and done. saw them, I got real quick. They yeah. like no, and let's talk to them in case. I have I have like a list of triggers for them. It's sure. an extensive list, and you guys were able to avoid doing anything of those triggers and you were able to pretty much find would, anything that was if he blew the here. horn originally 
without the friendship part that there we would have been a good chance of them attacking. Yeah, that's why. And each one of them is about as strong or a little bit stronger than the basilisk that you fought, so, so it would have been sure. it would have been really bad. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, it would have been really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Sense her on them. yeah, well that's like right. that would have been But that that's, that's a what, ritual. Yeah. That involves like getting it properly oh, stocked it and then get, it, it's it. not just instant no. friendship. You no. need to you need to get it going. Yeah, Oh, yeah. Even that takes a little bit of time, so it's, right. yeah. Oh. You, well, you, you don't know that. Damn. You have to... I was like, know everything. <laughs> Wait, so what was a, what's a ritual? Befriending the Prometheans? No. Oh, br- br- He's talking about rituals for the censor. That's what I was talking about, yeah. Yeah, well, it sounded... Mert was talking about the second ritual, I think. Or somebody was somebody about making them Oswald. friends. Yeah, there's... The, the censor has two rituals attached to it. Mm. Summon Nazgul and the bringer of gifts. Oh, and you don't know how long it would take to actually complete one of them because you haven't done either ritual yet. Gotcha. What other instructions for how to do them? You, it's it's clear to whoever has the censor how to do it. Okay. But it doesn't come with an instruction book or anything like that. That's a nice, nice size. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Yep. Looks like there's some mango in here, or not, not with these. Mango ones. tango. What you said last time. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's mango, banana, banana thank strawberry. You. Oh, that's really good. Mm-hmm. That's nice. I like that. See, Sean, we didn't have to come Monday. We came today and smoothies. We, we still, still got smoothies. Yeah, because I, I was shy. I had already bought the stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and pretty much, if you ever, yeah, I won't go through all the triggers, but there were a lot of triggers, and you guys avoided them, so good, good work. Uh, Artemis, do you want to give an inspection to the uh, the crown? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, you've identified its properties. Um, this was a possession of uh, a great warrior known as Mandos. Um, whoever wears this crown um, has uh, considerable boons in combat. First of all, all sources of damage, including magic, add one d six plus one lightning damage. Hmm. So you just have you have a constant damage boost and furthermore when an attack misses you you may make a basic ranged or melee attack against your attacker immediately as a free action just ducking and dodging Mm -hmm. ducking and dodging basically yep you were were paying attention this time yeah his guy is very lightning based already too so it's 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 on point what do you just call it crown of (laughs) M A N D O S. Mandos. Mandos, yeah. Mandos. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a worthy. And as he puts worthy. on the crown. Uh oh. Lightning five <laughs> No, yeah. Uh, no, it uh, says so if the ages of. Uh, dust and decay kind of just erased from the crown and mm. it is much more brilliant silver now upon your your head very nice so it looks like you uh you re almost rejuvenated the artifact so do i feel any new impulses no 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 urges or anything no whisperings nothing like that okay. you have the feeling uh that it, it's become a part of you, though. Might be difficult or impossible to remove. Not that you'd ever want to remove it. You can debate. You know, I was actually just going to say, you maybe you shouldn't wear that when we go into, like, town. Too late. <coughs> yeah, take it off, Mary. In character, <laughs> what do I make of that request? Do I just think, like, oh, yeah, it's just a hat. I'll just I'll take it off. Or do I feel compelled to like? Why uh, should I? Very. Uh, so, 
Were you going to comply with the request? Did you see no we reason not right to? Now. Well, you, you guys are at the edge of the, the ruins of the lost city in the swamp. Okay, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah, thanks. That seems right. Sounds good. I mean, I would rather hear okay, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Maybe, maybe we can play him off as some sort of king. Where to next in the swamp? Safest route to Gallimore. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ardeth Bay, would you trace with your finger the route you would like to lead them through the marsh? Here's the thing. Do we want to go back the way we came, or do we want to go a different way? Are we at, like, the edge? Edge of glory? Well, so, according to this map... Why don't we just head west? We could go up that way, like around the stay away, or go back the way we came. Why don't we just head west, out of the marsh, and then north? Let's see. That would be an option on the greater world map. Mm-hmm. Then we'll go that way, so we don't back. Okay. Your intention to get the party to Gallenmore. Yeah. Huh. As your destination, mm-hmm. I will take a will challenge check with, uh, we'll say, one bane. Is this something I can yes. use prey? So you don't have any bane. It just okay. negates because you have a boon. Fifteen. Okay. <coughs> Excellent smoothie, mate. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That was very good. Good job. To get to Gallenmore from your location <coughs> is a little bit further than when it took from you to get to, from Stanton to where you are now. Um, wow. Yeah. Long trip. Yep. Good thing we have animals. You do have animals, and once you make it out of the marsh, it'll be much fur- quicker going. Okay. Two weeks later, you come to the southern gate of Gallimore. Oh, <laughs> oh, time skip. <laughs> yep, that was a big one, but we're getting to that point in the campaign where I, I don't want to drag my feet too much with the trial. Uh, and you've got capable guides. Um, Artemis hit tier three of his religion, I think. Sure did. The rest of you are also now tier three of your religion. <sighs> I don't even know what that is, but you all you out. all made um, you all made progress along your fronts. Um, yeah, Murder, I have to go white ways back now in I think that. I found it. Yep. Gosh, you all mine is. It'll be in our Facebook Messenger, so I can go back. I I got it, Sean. Estelle's is you, right, Thomas? Mm-hmm. He is Estelle. Yours yeah. is light footed, permanent plus five yards, speed increase, and plus one to defense. That's great. Athena's is. You know what yours is, Adam? Mm-hmm. Okay. Athena's is Song, Song of the of Earth. Earth. Every 24 hours, once a, per 24 hours, you can spawn a tree up to 10 feet in height per level at your location if the ground is soil. Anything under the eaves of the branches is considered a forest. 10 feet per level? <laughs> yeah. Per level. Damn. So 50, 50 foot, foot trees tree. you can just... <laughs> yeah. Once a day. Yeah. Outdoor or... But so anything, it has to be the ground has to be soil. So there has to be ability so, for like. But that. I can conjure soil. Yeah, you can. You can, and you can put a pile of soil like in a high priest's yeah. like <laughs> fifty foot tree. Really? So just new, bam! New temple, clean new that temple. up. New temple. <laughs> new temple. What does right. that mean? Anything underneath is forest. Is that like for so if I have any eventually, abilities that have to be in the forest? For, well, further on in your religion, you have. I think your tier five. You have to be in in a forest. Yeah. Um. So, 
What'd you get, Mark? It's just a flavor thing. What did I get? Mm -hmm. But talk Uh, about instant snipers uh, post. Yeah, exactly. Yep. No one will notice this tree. <laughs> I know. I'm well, I mean, not so much they notice it, but melee can't get to you as easily yeah. when you're up in the uh, branches. I, I know I'm a light warden. I may well, radiate yeah, heavenly light, up. raising the light level of my just surroundings just within 10 yards <laughs> one tier at any time. So dark becomes mm-hmm. low light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I gauge Perfect. how tall I make the tree? And glaring, you can, you can so I really it want it to automatically be. have to be. Okay. So All it can right. be anywhere from ten feet to fifty feet so tall. Let's right now. Like evaluate what we're doing and going more. What are we doing and going more? We don't need to hire any labor because we still have plenty of men. Mm-hmm. So what we're here for, I suppose, are materials. All right, I have more to tell you before we begin your gallon more stuff. Two days after you encountered the Prometheans, um, Ardith Bay was the first to notice this. Would it be safe to say, Ardith Bay, that in your time outdoors, you do enjoy looking at the night sky, especially in the evening time to see the stars and such? Yes. Okay. I am a you are, external bot. Yes, you are. Yep. I like the outdoors. Okay, so two days after the Prometheans, you thought your eyes must have been deceiving you as you noticed a very distant but totally unfamiliar uh like little dot in the sky where you were used to seeing normal constellations. So it's like it's almost as if a new planetary body appeared. Um, you didn't even share this with any of your party members, but the next day were the Prometheans the giants? Yeah. Yeah. The next day you saw it again in the same spot and you were almost positive it looked a little bigger. And then the third day after you first noticed it, there could be no mistaking it. There has been a slowly growing sight in the sky, and the other party now can also perceive it. Right. A celestial body. Yes. And it's either growing larger very slowly or drawing nearer very slowly. Difficult to say which. Probably not slowly if it's noticeable each day, given right, the distance. Right, right. What's getting bigger? The moon? God damn it, Thomas! Guess not more or less. the moon, but it is a new celestial body yeah. that was uh-huh. not there And in before. fact, so it... Um, so it's been 12 days. By the time you reach the southern gate of Gallimore, it's 12 days since you first noticed it. Mm-hmm. And you can see it does not have the luster of a star. So it looks like it is, in fact, a, pla- a planet or a moon or something of that nature. Can I try to calculate how fast it would be moving? <sighs> Ooh, sundial. That's some, that's some advanced astronomy. That's what, what else do I have? Astrophysics. Do? Okay. <laughs> uh, I do have science profession. Okay, well, let's see. Ardith Bay reported it to you. Um, let's see. 16 minus 2 minus 3. What is that? 16 minus 2 minus 3? Yeah. That's 11. 11. 11. All right, she reported to you 11 days ago. So, yeah, you can give me an intellect challenge roll. How about It'll, a will challenge roll? That's acceptable. <clears throat> It'll get easier with each day. It's kind of like the puzzle box, so if you don't get it this time... 12. Okay. Um, You feel like you'll have an an estimate that you'd be comfortable with in a couple more nights of observation. If you had to just... If you had to, like... If someone had a knife to your throat right now and said, how fast is it approaching? (coughs) Is that that the question you want answered? How fast? Yeah, how fast, yeah. Um, can I try a slightly alternate tactic? Okay. All right, I'm gonna do a will challenge roll with two banes. Okay. That's a success, no matter what. All right. All right, now I automatically succeed. Okay. Um, it's approaching at about. You don't have to give me a number. Yeah. But if I could calculate how long until it would yeah, be... Yeah, no, I, I do want to give you a number, <laughs> Okay. It's approaching at about 800 miles a second. Mm-hmm. And... Wow. Uh, let's see. 
it was four. What's 16 minus 4? 12. Whoa. It's going to be here in 88 days. There you go. Mm, I think that's a line from Armageddon. 88 days? <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. I didn't intend on it, but yeah. No, probably not, but... Mm. Okay, 88 days. And the group duel takes over. How long did it take us to get mm. from Stan to here? From Stanton, it took you uh, two weeks to get from the south of the marshland to, to Gallimore. Gallimore, and that was equal to Stanton. Oh, well, that was that was a f further than from Stanton to there to the mark. Um, so if you made a straight shot, no, 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 I mean, how long has it been since we left Stanton? It's been, I think, about twenty-five days since you left Stanton. Hmm. That's a fourth. Just a, over a fourth of the time. So there's 88 more days. Now, granted, that. your path from no, Stanton, your path from right. Stanton went like, whoop, whoop, yeah, it was whoop, a little off. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> and how long do we think until we get to Drazda? Uh, let's see. From here to Drazda. Moving swiftly, breaking it. Yeah. Like yeah, if like if you took a small party, <laughs> you took a small party with galloping double horses, movement. double the movement. You could probably get there in like three to four days. Oh, okay, okay. so it's close. If you went with your current group pace, it would be about eight days. All right, be eight about days. double that length of time. Okay, so eight days. Let's give us a week to repair this airship. Yeah. Be generous. Mm. That leaves. Seventy some days to, what we to unite the globe <laughs> against <Yeah>. this <laughs> March, <threat. laughs> and then defeat it before. That's, I, there's no way we're getting Ragnar anywhere close to the duel in that think, time uh, period. It'll probably take you like eighty-eight days to get to Ragnar, almost from here. So like, do you possibly, think, do you we think, don't know how fast the airship. Oh yeah, no, that, that doesn't factor the airship. Do you think the evil cult is like summoning this toward us, and once we defeat it, it'll go away? That's what we learned, that if portals aren't closed, the opener of the way will arrive. Oh, you think he's on that thing? It's something, yeah. Or he is. Or he is the thing. <laughs> yeah. <Some laughs> the celestial body. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. kind of like right now, that's like the doomsday the clock. Doomsday yeah. clock yeah. 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 You, you could actually modify it next time so yeah. it's the, the countdown. Yeah. For it. We rule out Ragnar. Just fly the blue cape and stamp and then rally them. Problem is, we haven't dealt with blue cape yet. Not at all. Which we know <laughs> there's going to be some agents what working. Infestations there. going on yeah, there. That's yeah. where we sent all our women and children to. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna but, be... but you had your town elders there. Mm -hmm. They would not allow evil to. Well, they would try their best to allow. Some of that might have become yeah. evil. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tight. And we're not going to have an army capable of winning any sort of war. Mm -hmm. It's definitely just a distraction. So we can pick up the Prometheans. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, they were just as likely to right. pick you apart like they did the right. Masters. Right. So getting getting the crown from them, I think, is uh, okay. It's good to know. It's good to keep track yeah, of that number yeah. in case we need to change plans. But we got to be quick and get one more. So we need basic construction materials and tools. Hmm. I have an idea. So it would take eight days for the whole group, three or four days for a small group. We could send a small group ahead. To do what? I don't know. Scout it out. Start doing whatever needs to be done. What? I mean, is it better to have no one there until the eight days or have some people there like in four days? Well... Who's gonna be left behind? The men. Alright, so who's gonna like. So they're gonna just mm. make their own way to find us? Mm. They might need one steward. Golf? He, he would love the opportunity for mm. an important task. Merwin task. leaves his men. An important task I'm that not, doesn't involve fighting. I don't like the idea of that. But I also don't want to be splitting the party in that way. Like, I leave in 20 minutes, you guys keep going, but I'm there with them, then next week somehow we merge, 
And I'm still playing Gellin more with them. Yeah. And you guys I think are. it's best to stick together. You if, and if you guys... If you guys mm. ever felt as a party, you did want to do a split for whatever reason. Mm. Um, you know, I I am available on Signal if like True. if I, if I if we were able to like exchange a conversation for a while to help kind of bring it back bring it together. Back. I, I am open to that because I I I it's doable. Yeah. And I usually listen to the things. So, so yeah. I know so what's... don't don't feel like that's not an option. I want you, get, but I do want you guys to feel what you want your characters to do, and sure. we will try and work it out rather than just ruling it out. If, well, yeah. I would. I mean, if we thought it best to get there faster, either the men and. The, the materials are there or they're not and we can't do anything yeah. right yeah. and if we're gonna have them all go with the materials and stuff we might as well be there to protect them on the way that's, that's yeah. what I figured uh, uh -huh. right. so the eight days is worth the risk I think so yeah. this is what we're banking everything on I don't want to throw any more wrench in this but are we worried now that that is coming do we even care about agents anywhere else? Because do we think Gellinor oh, has been contaminated in some way? Well, irrelevant. We're not recruiting from here. Right. Unless they know that we exist and we're on our way to stop them. In which case, that really sucks. But otherwise, we're just here to grab materials and move on. Not make much of a splash. I don't know if I'd bring your men into town, though. That's what I'm. That's kind yeah. of what I'm saying. Who are these warmongers? Right. That are yeah. Yeah. That's well, kind of what I mean. If you could take off your crown, that would be that would be good when we we fall in. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like how it looks? It draws attention. <laughs> you could just like wear your hair <laughs> over it, like like just get him so in, in character. I mean, I want to abide him. You but do. like in character, do I? Can I? Or are you okay. saying am I compelled Here, let me not to take it off? I can tell you this much, Merrick, and it won't commit you one way or the other. As you move your hands to like start lifting it up, you feel like it's not stopping you. Like it's not like it become feels like it weighs like five thousand pounds or anything like that. But as you begin lifting it up, you feel like very faint as if like you're you're gonna pass out from doing so or it's like just very draining to remove it isn't there another way <laughs> <laughs> maybe we want attention what's wrong with you man <laughs> I don't know I don't is it cursed no no it's just uh okay are you Mandos now? I Have you become? I'm, I'm so much more powerful with it, though. You know, yeah. what if, if something goes wrong? I don't. You want me to have it? <laughs> good man. Not good man. <laughs> all right. All right. Hold on. Just for the gates. I'll take it off for the gates. You took it off? Yeah. Roll a d4. <laughs> Just collapse into a puddle. I mean, you have to accept that there's no consequences in advance, but only when a line is crossed. Four. All right, Thomas, um, you, uh, you collapse after removing the crown. <laughs> You've permanently lost one to your will score. Holy I shit! Really I regret it now. <laughs> and so you see him; he's just incapacitated, and the crown just rolls out of his hand. At least it wasn't strength. Yeah. Alright, we have to make a choice. <laughs> is there a minimum either... will to be able to cast spells? No. no. Okay. You either... cast spells at negative We either will. have to let him keep that crown on permanently or never put the crown on at all. And it was good. It definitely was. We well, just... I guess me, after... me never putting it on is not an option. <laughs> no. Right. So I guess so... after Gallimore, it probably won't yeah. matter. Just don't put it on for now, let's. We'll try to. I mean, if I had known. We would so if he's unconscious, yeah. does that? Can we try to wake him up, <laughs> or is he like? Yes, and you are. You have the hands of a healer. Yes, that's so. A... No roll, no cast is required. You're able okay. to help him come to about ten minutes after he passes. Right. And so that's kind of what, once you've kind of come to your senses, we explain. 
once we're out of Gellin Moor and you need to put that thing on, it's probably that best you'll to die keep with it. it. You, it yes. will be. Yeah. It is your. Yes. It, you I are. You are, and it are one. You are married okay. to that crown yeah. now, Merrick. I'm married to Mandos. Now well, let's think about how much <laughs> material we'll need. We'll need lumber. Gellinmore um, is about a little more than half the size of Sten, so it, it's a good sized town. Uh, are we going to try like, to restock food too, a little yeah, bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's situated uh, on the northern shore of the large lake. It also has a river going by, so it's kind of the the regional hub of the northwestern corner of the continent. Um, seems to be doing prospering. Um, you don't see any signs of recent war or raids, and um, the guards at the gates seem friendly to you. So it's a good. Sign. You get you get a good you get a good vibe from this place. That's if good. if the if the Shadow of the Demon Lord has fallen on this town. It is very well masked right now. Okay. Sean, I'm already going to take... So it's going to be eight days to Drazdad? Correct. I'm spending my 16... Well, that's eight days... That's the pack mule pace. Right. That's yes. the pace that we were planning. Right. Okay. I'm going to pay for my men's two gold per day for eight days. You're preemptively... Taking 16 gold okay. away. Okay. Well, Because we're going to... If I have yeah. to give any more... That's fine. That's fine. Yes, how much materials? Yeah, that, that so we're gonna need food. Yeah, more food. Probably a big cart. Right. Um, we're gonna need lumber, nails, cart. um, some sort of caulk. Um, it's hard to exactly know without knowing what's wrong with this fucking. That is true. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, tools, tools hammers, yeah. crowbars. You're probably gonna have to remove some boards that are rotten and replace them. Wood. Yeah, I said that. Lumber. Mm. Um. Brass, metal. You mean metal? Yeah. 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 Or. We don't have the capabilities to work Refined it. Refined or. For what? Replace like metal. But yeah, what we need, like, is joints and fittings. And what we need do we imagine? Or, should we hire somebody? To would he stuff? have recalled from his Artemis the well, power required forge. to power the airship? What? Well, its power source. There was um, there was a refracting gem that was like inside of this large steam engine. Okay. Um, I'm saying this it, it required of it required additional fuel of like coal and other things, That's but nice. but the the efficiency and basically the whole operating potential of the ship was seemed 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 to have had something to do with this very dense, highly um, I won't say like radioactive, but it it has a certain force to it sure. in his vision. So I mean, coal might be advisable. Yeah, to get I mean, coal sure. coal would be valuable to him. Some pipes. It's a list. Yeah. So, <clears throat> see if we can't find some sort of construction company or. To hire them? No, we have the laborers, but I mean, they probably have the material. Material. Yeah. If we can tell them that we're like. This is Buying materials to go repair a ship, not necessarily an airship. I assume it'll be similar. Do we have a main map, like of the world? Yeah. Yes. This is. I just want to see where Gellinmore is. This Gellin is it printed is. out. This is it printed out in black and white. So where is Gellinmore? You can pull up a, a higher quality. Is it picture. up here? Is that it, it right it's there? Right there. Okay. Main's got the color. So it's map. not a port city, right? Or is it? No. So it's on it's on the the coast of a large inland sea or lake. Sea. So yeah. ships, there might be like a docks or something. Nothing major. Fishing vessels. That's right, but I'm saying like someone who repair who like. Did you find I it? that's why I assume they'll have like it when you lumber that they could pre-cut. Uh, yes. For a ship. Right. 
That's what we want to buy. Okay. I mean, I imagine some of this you're going to want to go to your woodworkers or your blacksmiths, like tools. They're going to have a lot more. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're going to sprint around Gallon Moore. Yeah. Pretty much, Gallon Moore is our Home Depot. Okay. <laughs> we're just Home Depoting it. Like, yeah, that's fine. If I have to conjure some some golden bars to pass out. <laughs> Could run out of funds. I mean, I can trade my sword and teleport it back to myself. Oh wow. god! <laughs> over you and over. You can have this beautiful sword. And then does all it, of does it teleport or does it travel? Teleport. Oh okay. Teleport. Because I can imagine that would be like a <laughs> scene Slowly. of great carnage if it's just, just cleaving through it people. As a, oh my god, that's terrible. Like, it says teleport. Be old yeah. Teleport to hand with. That's action. what they. Uh, that's what they wanted Luke Skywalker to be. They wanted him to just stand like this, and lightsabers just fight for him in the air. Because in, in the books, that supposedly his that's power what level. happens. That's how powerful uh, he yeah, gets. That, yeah. that he the he can just use the force to wield his lightsabers. Well, why wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah. He it's could like be, he could have like he'd have like fifty lightsabers yeah. just floating around he's him in grievous, this defensive. He's perimeter. grievous, yeah, but without the, grievous, you know, the yeah, all the arms. Some people can just like grab lightsabers. Right. With their hands? With their hands, With like their a technique, hand. yeah. Oh my. Dude, that's crazy. I know. <laughs> I, you know, in episode three, I still just can't get over that Mace Windu didn't have, like, any stoicism at all to get his hand getting cut off. Because he's like, ah! Like, he's, he's in more pain than, like, Luke was. It's yeah. crazy. Hey. Like, yeah. That shit hurts. Yeah, I mean, I know it does. Sean. <laughs> I mean, Dooku. Dooku was just like, <laughs> he couldn't get both of his hands cut off. If yeah. they didn't have someone having it to earlier in the movie, yeah. I wouldn't have complained about it. Sean, never either. forget. We've gotten all the new movies, right? We know Luke yep. died, right? He, well, there ain't no Mace Windu! We never saw Mace die! No. You know, you don't find well, a body? And that's, that's a trope. Anytime someone's just falling, it's always just an open-ended thing. <laughs> Till you find a body. Yeah. So I don't Nothing. think there's ever an instance of a Jedi taking like fall damage. Right. <laughs> Man. I think they usually say like the video games they have some sort of like ability to like it's not like it's not a, like floating. Well almost like a cat falling on its always falling on its in, like, on its feet. In the one of the Clone Wars shows though, Dooku does like fly. Right. Yeah. So Yeah. Well, again, they use the force as like a. And it seems insane to me that they all can't fly because I feel like if they you should lift be, stuff, yeah. why can't you lift yourself? Right. And my only other comment, again, it's like an episode three kind of. So if you look at like Obi Wan in the six movies, mm -hmm. if it's any battle that isn't Dooku, he does really well. And mm -hmm. He he kills Darth. Well, he cuts yeah. Darth Maul in half. Yeah. yeah. I won't say he kills him. Yeah. Between. He no. does it. Right. Yeah. He cuts Darth Maul in half. He defeats Anakin yeah. in Episode Three, and then he does like his heroic. He do, he willingly sacrifices himself in Episode Four. Yeah, but he, against he Dooku, Grievous, he's yeah, he, he, and he, he kills Grievous. Right. But against Dooku, Dooku is his bane. In Episode Two and Three, he just immediately gets swiped away. Yeah. So which is Probably just hilarious. So that's the only guy he has a losing record. For, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you want to either write a list... I mean, I kind of started writing down okay. the things we that we were mentioning there. I don't yeah. I mean, I assume with my complete knowledge of building an airship, if we're forgetting something in character, we'd probably remember. Right, right. Just yeah. We're you know not what? out of character remembering all of it. I'd probably, I'd probably just be able to give you a lump gold sum. And be like, this is the cost for what you think you'll need with spares, and then we can just do it that mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm. But Murd, I, I would like to know what you had in your list up until now. Well, I don't know how many you wanted one cart or you think multiple carts. I didn't write carts. I wrote Depends cart. On the size of the cart, I right? Because oh. if you've got a ton of lumber, I imagine you're going to need a ton of carts to. Yeah, unless... and the lumber pieces are probably going to be pretty big. Right. So. It depends on the size of the cart. So I have carts, lumber, tools, which is hammers, saws, you know, all the different crowbars, crowbars nails, caulk, 
fittings, like brass fittings okay. and stuff like that, coal and piping, pipes that we made. You need. said lumber early on. Yes. Yep. I think that is, I mean, it might not be 100% sure. exhaustive, but that, that sounds good. <laughs> right. So, okay. And we're telling the merchant that we're trying to repair a ship. So hopefully we can get the lumber, like, pre-cut. Okay. For, like, the size of a ship. Yeah, okay. I'm sure. I mean, that'll be a little bit more expensive. Yeah. yeah. But, yep. Well, you find willing merchants in Gallimore that have have what you need. Okay. So, that isn't a big issue. Um, it's the it money. It does get down to payment. Yeah. Um, and I think you're theorizing that a lot of the airship itself will be sal- salvageable. You're more doing... Yeah. Patch up. Patch up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, um, if you have fifty gold pieces, that'll cover everything. Okay. Because you have you have the you have the the horses already mm-hmm. to actually haul the carts and everything. So. And the labor is uh, is. You mighty. have your men, yeah. which they keep pecking away, but I as long as pay the fifty. Oh, gold. there you go. All right. Um, as you make your last transaction, um, you see a. Finely dressed clerk, accompanied by what looks like two of the town patrolmen, approach you. Good day. Hello. I, uh, word in town has been spreading. You've been conducting some healthy business with our merchants. <clears throat> yes, we're just stopping by. We need a material to repair a ship that is in dire need. We are glad that, uh, that you have come. We have not seen this much gold pass through the town in quite some time, and the, uh, the prince of the town would host you this evening, if you would like. What time is it? Um, you arrived mid-morning. It took about a day to buy and haul. All- so you've got like all the stuff pretty much organized together, but it's about 6 p.m. now. So the prince of the town is offering to have you as his guest. And for we're definitely not going. We're, we're not, not starting, starting our travel no. tonight. Yep. Hmm. Let us meet this so-called prince. You think so? Now remember, my days. forty-five men are on the outskirts yes, of the town. Yes. Yes. They're like camped out. Well, if he's evil and we refuse, it's sort of the same result, except we're probably not trapped in his castle. Right. So, so but, you're, but, you're, but you're in his city. Except we could... Does the prince him. make such offers to all visitors of his town? I believe he would if he had the means, but unfortunately, no. We cannot throw a feast for all who enter, but you've, you've definitely caught his attention. I will read this man. Okay. Oh, read it well. Um, all right, so you're like, you do have to kind of speak your spell, I think. Right? Or do you have the feat that makes you not have to speak? Well, you can I can use focus, focus mind, mind real quick. Will you, will you folk? I crit. You <laughs> focus <laughs> mind. Which is, all right. Which is pretty useless. I'll, yeah. But I'll, I'll let it kind of translate okay. to having a, a very good read. All right. All right. Um, so... Um, this man's name is, uh, Reginald. Okay, his name is Reginald. Good. Good to know the name. He, uh, he seems to esteem his prince very highly. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he seems curious about you and your party. You, you definitely don't feel any ill will towards this man and again he thinks his prince is just like the greatest is there anything in particular I mean, you'd like it? to know because you could like zoom in with your crit on like parts of his mind i mean he's not in his head like oh wouldn't next this is like a pleasant evening. oh yeah oh yeah absolutely and, and yeah. i don't get any hints of like mental uh, oh, like he's been theater. like, it's, yeah. No, like no, it, it seems very genuine. Seems just from level. the depths of his heart, he loves his, right, his prince. I guess we'll go. Mer, maybe you could stay out of town with your men. Yeah. So that oh, if, if all should come to darkness, yeah. you could lead the 45 can, on yeah. a final. Okay, yeah. move on. All right. <laughs> Jeez. 
you are brought into the All castle. Right, See you, Mert. Have a good yeah, night. Yeah. You too. So the three of you plus Golk and Hubert are brought into the castle. Um, a a dinner feast has been prepared. Um, you see plates and placemats for you at the high table where the prince is seated. Um, he seems about middle-aged. Um, he uh, has a fine beard. Human? Yes. Okay. Um, he wears... Uh, he ha- he's dressed in very nice robes. They look almost more like a cleric's robes than a prince's uh, attire. Mm. So he, he looks like he stylizes himself as some kind of holy man or something of that nature. So it's not like regal is what you're saying? Well, like, it's very <laughs> nice cleric robes. Okay. It's not, it's not, and he does, you would see he does wear like an amulet that seems to defer his, uh, his authority. Mm. Um, and you recognize the sigil on the amulet. It is of the goddess Nerissa. So, one of the domain uh, deities. Is that the lover? That's the healer. Oh, the yep. healer. Yes. And um, he is called Zexar, the Prince of Life. So, he's, and he has a, a very... Who, who calls him that? His, his people. They, inter- they introduce him? Yes. Them? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, and he, he all invites you to the table and there is food and wine you see him eating and drinking freely of it so he's not like watching you as you uh, as you take your first bite or sip and um, he asks uh, I hear that you have found my town accommodating for your uh, your purposes the merchants say that uh, much gold was spent in the marketplace today uh, that's that's correct we Found everything we needed to repair our ship. Well, you do us honor, and I hope your vessel is uh, more fit than ever to resume its voyages upon your your repair work. That is that is our hope as well. I can tell you are not of Gallimore. Would you care to share of your of your travels or what you have heard recently across the continent? We've had less uh, less wayfarers than normal, and so we are always eager for news. I like to know what transpires elsewhere. I'm trying to think of a uh, believable route that yeah. we've been on that we would pass by Gellinmore without intention to stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, and you have to remember that on the big continent map, yes. the, the cities are not the only places where there's population like all throughout the land there's little like countless unnamed or unnoted so, villages would and there campers. be something west of Gellinmore? oh sir i mean there could be small villages okay. or towns it, that wouldn't be unbelievable for for someone to to accept so well we set out from blue cape some time ago and we sailed west stopped at port agron for some time ah yes we sailed north to do some trading among the smaller villages but we Collided with a nice collection of rocks uh, southwest of here. Mm. Fortunately, Gellinmore was close enough that we we came here to find materials. Uh, Well, may you have calm seas when you resume your journey. Thank you. Alright. It looks like he's mostly content to keep to himself and just enjoy the party unless you introduce new topics. It seems like he doesn't want to pry too much into your own affairs. Do we want to ask him anything about any tidings he's heard? Perhaps. Or, I mean, are we trying not to reveal what we know? Mostly. Just because it he's like... an agent. We don't want to say we know that much that we're that interested in it. Do you want to bring up the thing that's been coming out of this guy? <laughs> uh, the only if we that. heard somebody else notice it, which I guess is going to start to I mean, happen. We could just say we've noticed it, and like, have you? All right, yeah, that can work. See what he, how he reacts. But so I, I, I won't even address him. I'll just sort of talk loudly yeah. to Merrick okay. <laughs> about this strange orb in the sky that seems to be growing larger. Okay. Larger every day. Well, it seems like 
Prince Zexar can't help himself, mm -hmm. and he comments that he, along with his uh, foremost astrologer, have been observing it nightly as well, and that you're invited to join them on the terrace after dinner if you would like to look through their telescope. And that would be appreciated. On it. Ooh, a telescope. Yep, they do have a te they do have one telescope in the town, so it it will allow for a closer viewing. Um, yes, uh, and from our viewings, it's. Looks like a, a planet of uh, cerulean hue, as if the whole place was a uh, an ocean or perhaps a frozen ice cap. It's a most uh, unusual sight. It has been growing larger, at least from our initial observations. So, how many other planets are in the solar system? Well, this one. Um, well, let's just say main roll d twelve. We're going to determine that right now. Big ballin'. Yeah. Nine. All right, there's nine other planets. So they don't have a name for it. It's a phenomenon. And, uh, huh. I mean, really, there's never, ever been anything like this in, in history. So quite quite exciting times for, uh, for the stargazers and the scholars. Yes, quite on. We heard... Rumblings in Blue Cave before we left that there were activities happening in Zuknu. Mm. We've he, been at sea, though. Have you heard? At of the mention of Zuknu, he kind of clutches his pendant as like a guard against evil, and he says, uh, "If that is true, then something must be done." But what of this threat? It is inadvisable to march to war until uh, until a threat is understood. So you've not heard anything? No. Um, apart, not a, apart from the usual talkings of orcs in the wastelands and other such things, but these are these are uh, common uh, fixtures of of our uh, of our world. You know, there's always rumors of evil creatures and those who would conspire with demons and other evils. Why not read his mind? All right. So, is that a target against Will? Does well, he have any chance of resisting? Uh, or? Just casting it, I get surface thoughts and emotions. Okay. And then I can I can focus on somebody if I need to learn more. Okay. Are you using the focus again to conceal your casting of it, or are you just going to try and surreptitiously, like, have a goblet over your face when you're uh, you're doing or like I will do the focus. Okay. Part. Yeah, that's that happened. That's fine. All right. Oh. Get focused. And uh, so he is holding back. He has a bit heard a number of reports. It seems you see that kind of circulating in his mind. Um, he's heard of like a ma like. A massive orc army. He's heard of, like, a conspiracy, like an alliance of dragons. He's so he's he's heard like a bunch of different accounts. So it looks like he's heard enough conflicting rumors that he's kind of dismissing them as a whole. Um, you don't you don't kind of get the feeling that he has insider knowledge. It just seems like he's heard. He doesn't find anything that he's heard to have been reliable, so he hasn't really been moved to action. I'm going to roll Will versus Will. Okay. And I'm going to go deeper. All right. Deeper. That is 14 versus his Will. Okay. If you tie it, what is that? That's probably up to you. Okay. Uh, let's roll off. Four. Okay. Um, I can also use command over fate. You should. Then I will do it. Okay. So let me re-roll the original will versus will. Oh. That's 20. Okay. Um, this guy is a highly skilled life magic user. Um, 
He also has some knowledge in destruction mag magic. Um, he, and recruit this guy. he is sympathetic um, to... No. no he's, Say it. No, Say it. No, I, I won't. <laughs> he's sympathetic to the Nihilin heresy. Whoa. So, it's even worse. No, it, it's... It, Artemis would Sounds approve. Like like, yeah, so. yeah. He, he thinks that like the proliferation and acceptance of like nihilists and his beliefs is actually what keeps the domain itself from falling apart like it needs like kind of like this counterbalance in the void or something like it's a very but it, it seems like you'd be sympathetic to that um so i should whisper into his ear you could yeah Hail you're right right um, <laughs> yeah but he he himself is most personally uh devout to to nerissa because he's got all this life magic um seems like a good guy from your read okay uh, yep that's fine then and he doesn't have like some weird cody counselor or something like that he has a number of counselors and nobles hanging about. None of them look toady. Okay. Um, Good. <laughs> you can tell, actually, from your read, he's most... Right now, he's the most troubled about the dwarves in Drazgar. Oh. we taking them off. How do I broach that one? Yeah. About dwarves. <laughs> okay. Say we saw one. And we're like, what about those? <laughs> we no. saw one of those saw dwarves, dwarves, yeah. Aren't, those, aren't they funny? No, I'll say we... We were contemplating swooping around and perhaps dealing with the dwarves in Drazdad. How is how's business there? Yes, I suppose there shouldn't be too much ice in the waters uh, at this time of year if you were to to go by way of the coast. I am not master of your own affairs, so I will not stop you from going to them, but we would welcome your advice. <coughs> you should know that at least for the past decade or so, they've closed themselves off to... Uh, open trade with the outside world. Oh. They're essentially bunkered in their mountain. And <laughs> my last uh, trade delegation that I sent was fired upon by rifles as we approached the gates. Oh, dear. I fear they are up to some mischief within that mountain. And it is not kind of me to assume that of my, of our other kin upon this, this earth, that the dwarves, dwarves have enough negative stereotypes and thoughts amongst them that they don't need me to pile more on them, but it just seems so odd to me that suddenly they would find their mountain to be of the utmost secrecy, that they would reject even trade delegations, which we'd enjoyed for a long time with them. So hopefully they have found some great riches within the mountain and thus are just naturally covetous of that, but I do fear that sometimes there are evil things that can be found within mountains that may corrupt the hearts of otherwise well-intentioned creatures. Mm. Well, we appreciate the warning. Yes. If you're able to bring back any information about what is going on, should you uh, brave uh, the mountainous area, that would be worth something, at least to the merchants of my town. So I would see that you are rewarded in what way that I can. We will consider it, but we're not exactly built for being fired upon. Right. Right. Bypassing the mountain altogether would also be a wise venture, depending on what your business might be. Hmm. Okay, I know. that's probably about it. Okay. Let's see that telescope. All right. Dinner concludes, and you guys head up to the, the terrace with the prince and astrologer, and there's like kind of one guard just kind of farting around by the stairs where you came up. And, uh, yes, you're free to, obs to observe the planet with the telescope. If you have an 11 or higher intellect, eventually you can just zoom in on it with the telescope. You don't need to do rolls or anything. It's a little bit more difficult for lower inte intelligence. Hmm. But if you set it up for me, can I... Yeah, you, you could. Yeah. You get it I'll just it. perfect. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't bump it. Don't breathe on it. Just look. At, yep. All right. Uh, you're able to look at it. Main. You have... Significant magnification. I wonder if you could declare this telescope your weapon and then teleport it to me. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Is it a weapon? I don't know. Can anything be a weapon? How long are you going to look at the planet, Artemis? 
That's, that sounds like an innocuous yeah. question, right? Sounds harmless. I'll say one second. Okay. <laughs> you take a glimpse. You see a grayish, bluish, greenish planet. Um, and, you know, it, and then you look away. Do I get a sense of foreboding or doom or anything? No, not for one second. Okay, no. then I'll look for ten seconds. Okay. Um, okay, you're able to kind of... You're able to kind of perceive more details. Uh, you can see, like, kind of little... Uh, craters and valleys and stuff. It looks uh, mostly barren, kind of like looking at the surface of the moon. But it, so it's, it's not like a gas planet. No, no, certainly not. Okay. But it is touched by some coloration, suggesting like some sort of flora or fauna, like mm. on the surface. Okay. And you find it pretty interesting now that you're looking at it. How interesting? All right. You'll keep looking at it. Then. <laughs> I right. guess so. All right. After about a minute, um, you notice there's much more detail that you're beginning to notice as you're looking at the planet itself. Um, there's kind of like uh, what looks like either underground rivers or some sort of long-standing like, formation of like canyons that must have formed over time. You see kind of like a veiny pattern running through the planet. So, huh, never mm -hmm. noticed that before. And eventually you start to see, uh, you know, you're not sure if you're able to increase the magnification or if it's just coming into better focus, but it looks like um, there's actually little kind of pools throughout the planet in a number of places. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. So you, you find that the more you're looking at it, the more you're, you're observing. I will let Merrick see. Okay. Merrick. What do you see there? Oh, okay. It's a fascinating planet. Huh? Yeah. It's an awesome telescope. I'll gaze upon it. All right. Um, I'm going to repeat everything I said to Artemis back to you. So hopefully you got a gist of that. Veins. That's from about 90 seconds of looking at it. Okay. You want to continue observing? Sure. All right. Eventually, you see these pools um, have kind of coloration within the pools that are of a darker uh, color. Uh, and in fact, it, it looks kind of like, like the iris of an eye. And then you're noticing all the pools kind of have a similar pattern like that. And in fact, you begin to see them blinking. So there's many eyes. Yes. And you find that one of the eyes in particular seems to be looking back right at the telescope and you feel like you're locked into vision with this eye. like it's making eye contact with you personally right now i try to break away okay i need a will with three veins it's like the basilisk all over again yeah i'm gonna have to knock you out to break this telescope to get me away. It's less, it's bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's five minus three veins. Okay. All right. You take three madness. What is that? Insanity. Three, three insanity. And you don't notice it, Thomas. You're, you're also, you're going to choose not to look away. You want to keep looking. <coughs> you, get, you notice whoever's up on the terrace with Merrick you see that he and the telescope are now levitating and ascending alarmingly up into the sky. That's not good. Is he within reach or no? He's still momentarily within reach. <laughs> Grasp me. I crush you. <laughs> Can I, like, try and grab at his leg? Yes. Give me an agility with one vein. This is, uh, this is what you, s you saw, uh, Mary. I'll, I'll show Artemis, too, because you got pretty fun. There he is. Oh. See him? <laughs> there he is. Mm, boy, that's <laughs> not good. Yeah. I don't want him to come here. 16. Okay. Artith Bay has grabbed you by your shin and is preventing you from flying up further. Mm -hmm. Yet, Artith Bay, you notice that even though you're holding him, mm -hmm. 
you're starting to feel as if he's full of hot gas that you're starting to lift up to. This is not good. So I'm gonna say, Merrick, look away. <laughs> okay, you hear like a distant voice, as if like you're deep underwater, of Ardith Bay, saying like, "Okay, I'm gonna create. Yep, I'm gonna create <laughs> a very heavy metal mesh okay. <laughs> above Merrick." All right. So like a net kind yeah, of? Yeah, like a metal net. Like <laughs> weigh him down. All right. All right. You don't feel anything right now, by the way, Mary. You don't feel Ardith Bay on your foot. You don't feel this mesh you're running into. You are beyond feeling. But but it's going to help with your subsequent will roll. Okay. So now it's only a will with one bait. Okay. Can it possibly so, succeed? We got a chance. Okay. No. no. Okay. Unless Merv can pray for me. From he is not room. present. Okay. Right. The, when we you left most him outside. Desperately need him to pray. Specifically. Okay. Um, he needs to pray for all right. my fate. You, you're going to take one more insanity. Oh, God. And you, uh, he hits into the metal net with the telescope. And you see the telescope just kind of like bounces off to the side. It, it's like it fall. It's about to fall and crash into the ground. I'll use mind over matter. <laughs> okay, so save it with the telekinesis. Yeah. Okay, you save it. You see Merrick like <laughs> running up against the metal net, and you see the metal is actually starting to tear. Oh so it's like God. he's so going up. So the telescope's no longer attached to me. No, right, I save that. You're, I save that. But your what you see hasn't is not changing. So I still I still you're looking, think I'm, I'm gonna, looking I'm through the telescope. I'm okay, I got it. I, no, I got it. I'm gonna make a force barrier. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> if you get through that, then <laughs> yeah, then you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I slide around it. All right. And how slippery is a force barrier? Probably not much. Probably not right. slippery at all. I wouldn't think it's so. not glass. It's you're no, gonna, it's not glass. All right. This is this is your best chance because the force barrier itself is going to create a temporary break with Alabar's gaze upon you. However, it is invisible. Right, I know that, but okay. like there's like a field of magic actually yes, in between them. So that doesn't save you, but now this you get a final you get a final roll. Final. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say <laughs> final. final. All right, you get two boons oh, here. Line. You get two boons here. Better not roll less five. Let's see it. Oh, man. I'm gonna reach, it's I'm gonna getting reach scary. Alabar. Like, you could, you could fly into space. There you go. Oh, there we go. Is it going to succeed? It's already an 11. All right. You take you take three damage from crashing into the forest barrier because you were being pulled up with just incredible mm. exertion. Damn. But you now see nothing but the sky above you and the invisible, like, wobble of, like, the... Um, shuddering air from where the barrier is, and now you're falling towards the tower. It's about a 15 foot drop. So I wasn't holding on to him anymore? You were still holding on to him, so you're going to start falling too. Oh, I was getting pulled up into the air? I assume you didn't let go, but did you want to let go? Oh. Well, now it's kind of pointless. You've already said, you just never said, I mean, you said that I felt like I was getting pulled, but not that I was getting I pulled that I could have been high. more specific. I apologize. I will conjure a nice cushion. Okay. What's the size of the cushion? One yard. Oh, all right. Very they, precise. Ardith Bay and Merrick land on it mm. and are fine. There you go. Oh. Save your ass. Zexar, his astrologer, and the guard are just open jawed at what <laughs> Something like. <laughs> yeah, like you clearly had to magically intervene to prevent him from just being sucked up into space. I suggest you don't gaze upon the planet. We will take your advice. <laughs> that you guys never looked at it more than a minute. I don't know if if there was just something about this night in particular, about mm. about you yourself, or if you just had the better skill in in perceiving it. But no, we had not observed this reaction before. It was looking at me. It's worrisome. It saw me. What does it want? With this us? is clearly this is clearly a, a magical planet or yes or being even that is that is up there we will have to issue a citywide decree that would be recommended what can we do against a planet 
Well, we prevented Team Ryan from getting here. Oh. Yeah. Closing the portal. Right. Yeah. You think you think it's connected? That's what we learned. Yeah. We learned it's connected. Huber told us that. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, there it is. You got confirmation of uh, what you, what you're dealing with. If only I knew. Zexar rubs his chin and says, uh, "Would you care to describe what you saw when you were looking?" planet with yes we have observed eyes this. okay you, you mentioned pools. the eyes yes one of them was looking upon me but you know what it could see you from yes, that distance I think so that's what I felt like when I was being pulled I felt like it was I was locked into it and gazing with it mm. I do have one more idea I fear what will happen when this planet is if it continues approaching if it gets close enough that people may gaze upon these eyes with yeah. out the use of a telescope, how many will be flying towards the stars <laughs> to their doom? Many. Great. <laughs> I'm, I am uniquely qualified to gaze upon it, though, because I, now that I know, what I could use my boots of anchoring. <laughs> and just be driven insane right where I stand. Stare at it. Or it could rip like the whole castle. <laughs> 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 Whatever you're anchored to yeah. just comes with you. Okay. That's. Yeah. I mean, if you want to try, I guess for no, science, I, I don't yeah. see. I mean, it's yeah. an interesting experiment to see what would happen. But what's the benefit? There isn't one. Yeah, yeah. That's it. it would be only harmful. We know right. this is a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, do you have anything more for for Prince Xar that night, or are you just gonna make ready for your? Your journey. He seems like a good dude. Yep. I mean, I doubt Gellinmore has much of a military. But oh, the dwarf thing. What about it? My thoughts. I bet they know about the airship and they're working on it. Let's hope not. For ten years. Because he said they shut off. They closed off oh, like ten years I, ago. Yeah. No, I guess not specifically. It's something worse than that, I'm sure. And. But Artemis specifically had a vision of it on the mountainside. Yep. And he had nothing to suggest that that was, like, in the far distant past. No. And so it doesn't sound like the dwarves are, from what the he described to you, it sounds like they're kind of, like, within their little Erebor. They're not leaving that, so. Yeah. Now I think we have to be extra careful not to get caught. <laughs> yeah. By the dwarves? Yeah, because I don't think diplomacy is going to be much of an option. You don't want a rifle squad shooting at you while you're working on that, so. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys, I'll give you a little bit more time to think about it between now and our next session if you, you do have any final business in Gallonmore. But mm -hmm. we'll end the session with that uh, foreboding vision that Merrick uh, receives. All right. All right. And additionally, enough, I'll be gone for the next two sessions. Is that assuming one specific day, or do you just not foresee a day where you'd possibly be able to do it in the week? This is like our uh, Florida recording trip for two weeks. Oh, so you're going to be down, be down there for quite a while. I'm totally gone for, for two weeks. And then you're going to Japan. You've got, you're burning through some PTO this, yep. uh, <laughs> this half of the year. Well, All of it. Okay. I think, so I'll come back think Thomas tonight. will... I think we might do like maybe one session in your absence as a half measure. If you prefer, I think, you know, we could we could probably pause it at all, but I think that would probably be a way to keep it from being too long of time and then just giving you a recap of what happened. Okay. But I, I will respect the, the concept of keeping it intact so that you can come back fresh from your vision and we could do either something else or just have a... We'll, we'll discuss this in Signal, but thank you for notifying us. All right. All right, good stuff. Are you, are you going to be the driver for that trip, or is that not...